This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hey, buddy, it's the Doughboys. Are you looking for a taste of something new? Then we have the perfect food podcast recommendation for you. Gravy! No, not the gravy you serve with your Thanksgiving turkey or spoon over biscuits, but like that gravy, there's plenty to go around. Gravy, your favorite food. I do love gravy. Produced by Southern Foodways Alliance and distributed by APT Podcast Studios, Gravy is the chart-topping James Beard award-winning podcast. That's the Oscars of food, people. And each episode, they share stories of the changing American South through the foods we absolutely love to eat. Not only will these episodes leave your mouth watering, you'll also gain a greater appreciation for the unsung folks who make, grow, and serve amazing Southern food. From the overlooked baker behind the legendary Mile High Pie to the multi-generational family who've played a key role in Louisiana's oyster industry. If you need a place to start, definitely check out their recent episode about the global domination of KFC. Yep, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and how this Southern staple became one of the most popular restaurant chains in China. So go ahead, follow Gravy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite listening app. And tell them we sent you the Doughboys. 148 days. That's the length of the just-concluded WGA strike that ended in massive gains for workers who write movies and TV shows. With SAG-AFTRA still on the picket lines, the hope is that the studios will resume negotiations with the actors' union and agree to their fair demands for a living wage and workplace protections. But amidst this Hollywood shutdown due to studio intransigence, another major industry has gone offline because of corporate greed. The auto industry. UAW, a union that traces its beginnings to carriage and wagon workers organizing in the 1890s, is currently on strike against the so-called Big Three automakers. And as massive labor actions have put the brakes on the defining industries of two major American cities, Los Angeles and Detroit, it just so happens that this LA-based podcast is reviewing a Detroit-area pizza chain. Founded in 1973 in the Detroit suburb of Taylor, Michigan, the restaurant began franchising a decade later, and by the end of the 1980s had more than 150 locations. With its toe-headed cherubic mascot and trademarked flavored crust pizza, this Motor City pie proffer has built a loyal following in the Rust Belt and today has north of 500 outlets. So just how does walking the picket line align with standing in the pizza line? Does this hot labor summer affect our affections for hot honey pepperoni? And in this time of union ascendance nationwide and in the food service industry in particular, when will pizza chain workers organize en masse and receive their fair slice of the saucy, cheesy pie? This week on Doughboys, Hungry Howie's Pizza. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, the Banshee of I Ain't Sharon, the Spoon Man Mike Mitchell. That's pretty good, honestly. (laughs) Uh, Thanks for the laughs. Can't believe believe All In didn't get you fat fucks to the UK from Mulder's Trunks on the Discord. Thanks, Mulder's Trunks. Mm. Roastspoonman at gmail.com. Well, look. All In played Wembley. It's a little bit in in the past as of this episode release, but it's fun. Look. We're not going overseas. No, with, with you. No, you you made it clear. We I had mean. that window. We had that opportunity. I would have done I it. I feel like you owe a London show. We, 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 I would have done it. You owe a London show. You're the one who canceled. I was ready to go. I I, I had to do tomorrow war. Ain't my problem. <laughs> <laughs> to schedule that war for yesterday would have been. <laughs> So you're not going to do a London show ever? Oh, no, we got to fucking go there. What am I going to do? I'm going to get on a plane. Go to the UK. Yeah. Be like, what's all this then? What am I, I going to do that? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> no. You're ne- so you're, you're never going to go. I didn't say never, but no, nah, I'm going to plan to do Doughboys live over there. It's fine. We've done enough live shows I feel for like, a lifetime. For me, I feel like we owe a, owe a London show. Okay. Well, you can do one. Oh, yeah. How, how you feeling, buddy? What monkey paw did I wish upon? <laughs> <laughs> I want to like be able to go on the road and do comedy on the sh- on the road, and uh, in front of in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> you can do that. You have that ability. Yeah, boy. You could do your own act. You could travel. You could do. It. You could do your own show. You'd be what people would come talk see about it for an hour. Fucking no. <sighs> what are you talking about in this show? That same bullshit. Just write it down. 
write down what I write. I, like I'm, I, 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 I'm like my dick looked small today. I'm gonna do that in stand up. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> Look, you don't have to go to London, but yo, a London show. Fish and uh, chips, we'll Big Ben. And, and though just going there feels exhausting, and then you get the, add on top of that the idea of doing a show. I'm like, come on. What if what we do doing? Wembley Stadium next year? Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the only tour stop next year is Wembley Stadium. <laughs> how many? How how full do you think the emptiest get it? it's ever been? <laughs> it would be funny to do that show and like you owe us like six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like shit, <laughs> expensive to Fuck, run this place yeah. out. I guess. Anyways, all right. Sorry, London. Yeah, fucking fuck you, you Brits. Anyways, I'm still pissed off. <laughs> I'm still pissed from the Revolutionary there War. There you go. There you go. You figured out the right angle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> An itchy neck. You ever get an itch somewhere? Just like, what's going on here? It sounds like could be a Dracula bite. <laughs> say that we're getting close to the spooky season. So it's Dracula season. You wake, it's it's a, I mean, spooky season is Dracula season. You think you got much... fucking bit by a Dracula, and that's why I'm itching? It's a possibility. Oh man, I don't know about that. Or where are you? Maybe you got bit by a werewolf, and you're itchy that way. I don't yeah, know. Look, let's just get on the show and have a sip of blood, and then we'll. <laughs> Talk about this later. This is bad news. I watched The Exorcist the other night. Good I movie. Seen it in a long time. Yeah, it is a good movie. Yeah. Do we see the Pope's Exorcist? I haven't seen the Pope's Exorcist. Great title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it the Post Exorcism or Post Exorcist? I think it's the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah. The guy who the po- like the Pope's personal exorcist. Is it is the movie just the Pope watching The Exorcist? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Pope's copy of Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scary. <laughs> Mamma Mia, Reagan. <laughs> That's what he said in the 80s. <laughs> it sounds like Brooklyn in the 80s. <laughs> was Brooklyn Italian? Or is that just a Mario thing? It was Italian. No, it right? was Italian. Okay. Yeah, no, bro. They put Brooklyn, they put Mario in Brooklyn because of, I think it's historically Got Italian. It. Okay, yeah. okay. Like this, what, what's the neighborhood the, in, in, uh, in Boston, that's like that. The North End. The North End, like mm-hmm. the North. I almost said the South End. It would embarrass myself. The North oh, End. Why? Southies where the Irish are. Got it. And yeah. then there is a South End, which is different. I guess you wouldn't. There are some Italians in the South End, right? I don't know what don't it overly is. People are going to make fun of me and be mad at me, but whatever. It's all gentrified. Anyways, who gives a shit? Who we gi- gotta wake up, man. Let's wake up. <laughs> Here we go. We're doing a show. One, two, one, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, oh, four, fuck, five, six, I went to seven, nine. Eight. Oh, God. <laughs> two, three, four, oh, Mitch. I did crazy nine. You're going to have too much energy. I'm awake. You got to go get a coffee. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Look, it's a double record day. <laughs> That's every day. I know, but this, 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 that second episode, I'm a little I'm a little groggy. A little grogu. <laughs> Fucking baby Yoda ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be a little grogu. Be beloved. I fucking crush you up into a little ball, toss you away. <laughs> you try. Well, you know, oh, he's got you got. He's got four, fucking force powers. You got force man. powers. Fucking for, you don't want to be a baby for like a hundred years. Sounds no, like, I don't. I mean, the sounds long... like you got your wish. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> long lifespan seems nice, but yeah, that that I'm sure that adolescent period, the the, the aging process, growing up would be would feel interminable because mm. it does in a human lifespan. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you gotta have a diaper for a hundred years. Does he still shit himself, Baby Yoda? They've never talked about what how he shits. I don't. think. They gotta show <laughs> Luke changing its diaper at one point. That would be fun. That would be cute if they did that. Yeah. Mm. Do you think? Hmm. If it's green, would it have like a you know how babies have like green shit? Why do babies do have the green shit? I'm sure there's some sort of biological <laughs> explanation. I don't know. I haven't looked it up. You, you're saying because Grogu is green, green that his would, shit might be a different color. See, yeah. I don't think the color of your skin determines the color of like your bodily fluids. Yeah, I don't think that's a, that's a thing that they always do with like <laughs> aliens, and it's like I don't think it works that way. Yeah, I don't think like a Navi takes like a blue piss. Like it doesn't yeah. work. That's like they're pissing like fucking Gatorade ice. No, that's not how that's, it works. That's like, yes. Yeah, that's the, that seems very border- aggressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're like Nazi science <laughs> in some way, um, but uh, but I do wonder what I wonder what Yoda shit is like. Anyways, does Yoda just have like a brown shit like everyone else? I don't know. 
It's it, it's an interesting question. It is an interesting question. They don't get into that in the novelizations. <laughs> I haven't there's read it. There's in a like, lot of them. There's yeah, an illustration the of a Yoda shit, I think, <laughs> right. in like one of the first few pages. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool if there was, if 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 Star Wars was like like Lord of the Rings, where they went into like, like the novelizations went into like pages about Yoda taking a shit. It would be great. I think you're thinking of a different book. What, Lord of the Rings? I don't think there's long stretches in about the Lord Hobbit of the Rings shit. about like the Hobbit <laughs> shitting or like Gandalf like fucking. I, don't, a piss. don't they go on like weird long tangents? I about, think you're like, thinking of Game of Thrones. Oh, That's where it'll be like Daenerys having like diarrhea in the grass and like they'll talk about that for way too long. Or there'll be like just a super long description of all like these these spices that are in like the Night's Watch's pantry. Oh, okay. You know? I thought that... I, I think that's more of a George R. R. Martin flourish. Got it, got it. The Lord of the Rings books are pretty PG thirteen. Okay. Yeah. All right. No. Fair no. enough. No, they're not talking about someone taking a like fucking Samwise taking a fucking big shit. <laughs> then you know what? Lord of the Rings should do it too. I think it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> Put him on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's in the Rings of Power. I haven't seen it. You believe I did a crazy nine? Yeah, it threw off like, the whole show, honestly. I know. <laughs> you know how many improv teams would be blown away by crazy nines? <laughs> Why? Well, we, we're, uh, we're... Take more of our money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that should be a workshop you do. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy nines. Seven hundred dollars. By the sla- by the last class, you will be doing crazy nines. <laughs> That's my guarantee. Look to your left. <laughs> Look to your right. <laughs> uh Wags. How the hell does Spoon Nation gonna hit him up with a little drop? We're saying that I think that's I got why a pitch they for you. being the base for these long tots. They're like fries, but they're tots. <laughs> they're so long they're like tots. Hash, like the long tots. Long tots. What do you think? Dum dum dum. Yeah, 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 yum. Longest Eat the longest tot. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> for the longest. Tots used to be small and kind of round. Ooh. Now there's longer tots that could be found. Oh. What else would I chew? Ooh. I'm so hungry for you. I would have a meal of the longest tots. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure you guys regret doing the show. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> I liked all of that except for the fact that we laughed at it at the end. <laughs> that was pretty – I think long shots, one, are a good idea. Mm-hmm. Two, maybe they should take that crazy ninth class. We did a fucking – we improvised pretty perfectly. Good. Yeah. Perfectly. <laughs> Who said that drop in? Wags. Yeah, all right. Getting ready to get out of here, it seems like, huh? I'm not doing that. It's just we fucked around a lot. We have a great guest here today. <laughs> it's only 10 minutes in. That's longer than it normally is before we introduce somebody. It's one twelfth of the show. <laughs> one, <laughs> one thirteenth. One thirteenth? Yeah. What do you think of that? I think that math might work out. Yeah. Does it really? 90 minutes. Pretty oh, wait, close. what? What? <laughs> uh... <laughs> No, be like one ten one ninth of the show. I was saying, if you think of hmm. accounting ad breaks, or if you're saying, saying a long and, If you're thinking of a hundred, oh no, it's not one hundred and thirty minutes because that's I, I was wrong. Yeah, ninety minutes. We've so, done one hundred thirty minutes. Yeah, unless we go two hours ten minutes. Yeah, we which could, we could. We could. So it's not one. It's it's it's. I was wrong. Look, we'll make it one hundred thirty minutes just, <laughs> just so, so you're, you're right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so one ninth of the show. Got it. We'll which see. is pretty good. Anyway. My math is my math was still pretty good. You gotta admit, you're you, you should take you should just fucking relax and take a break anyways. If we d- if we'd done crazy eights, I'd be fine. <laughs> you threw in the extra one, <laughs> and that wore you gassed. out. Yeah. <laughs> Remember you do like improv? It's like, hey, what's what? When can everyone do like improv practice or uh-huh. Harold practice? I guess is what it was. And then it would be like people would have all these issues, and it's like, okay, so we're scheduled for Saturday morning at nine a.m. Okay, like that's. Yeah. That's what it would end. That sucked. Yeah, I know. You don't want to do that. Horrible. It's not a good environment for improv. No. Yeah. Horrible. Anyways. Hey, Doughboys crew. That's like such a specific complaint. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think organizing any group of adults to do something when you've all got lives and conflicts, it's like, it's fucking tough. It's Saturday like, morning. Awful choice. The, the way you got to do it, I feel like with anything is you just have to find a time and be like, this is the time it is. And whoever can missing, show up, yeah, show up. Fuck yeah. off if yeah. you're missing. I think that's the only way to do it. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. 
Hey, Doughboys crew. I really enjoyed your improvised song from the Domino's 3 episode with Emily Gonzalez and Henley Cox. That's what it was. It was, what, yeah, the, with the, with the Wait, two scared in one. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if it was that long ago. Seriously, long top fries seem like an easy money concept. Why don't they exist yet? Scorpion rules, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> All right, we're at almost. We're almost at uh, two ninths. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest today is a comedian whose debut album, Funny Songs and Sketches, releases on September 29th. That's tomorrow, as of this episode's wow. release. Wow. So look for that. And tonight. If you're in L.A., you can join him for his album release party at Dynasty Typewriter wow. here in the city. Joe Quazala. Hi, Joe. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. What a treat. What, a, what an absolute delight. I think the, the the we saw you in person, and this is like a little bit in the past, but mm -hmm. we saw you in person by sheer coincidence yes. in Michigan. Yes. We'd done a live right. show, and mm -hmm. then we were at a bar, and you were there also. You'd done a, a different live show at a different venue. It just happened to be in the same place. Down, like literally down the street. Wild. It wasn't even like we were both in the Detroit area. It was like we were two blocks away. Yeah, and, in and like Royal, Royal Oak, Michigan. Oak, Michigan. Yeah. Weird city. Yeah. Inter an interesting place. Uh, fitting for this episode, Michigan, uh, that is the home of the chain we'll be talking about. Very, it's partly why I brought it up, uh. which is it's very Midwest oriented and very mm -hmm. Rust Belt oriented. And I feel like that's like a lot of your life, right? You grew yeah. up in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You lived in Chicago yes. for a time, started doing stand up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, do like... The Midwest, the Bre I'm not sure if you consider Pittsburgh the Midwest, I but do like not. okay, but like the Rust Belt in general, that sort mm -hmm. of the sort of area of Can the high school say no one does. I don't, I don't think. fucking know. I've I, I've heard people outside, especially outside of Pittsburgh, yeah. will try to be like, oh, that's the Midwest. But I feel like if you've been there, it's to me, it's clearly not the Midwest. But it's but also I not. Get, it's not New England either. It's, it's Mid Atlantic. Mid Atlantic. You would, okay. you would put it into that kind of New England. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh oh, Mitch is taking his shirt off. He's about to throw down. <laughs> Massachusetts, uh -huh. Rhode Island, uh -huh. Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. That's New England. That's all New England. That's Draw it. the line. That's it. And York we don't even like Connecticut, huh? I think New York should be no. in there. New York is part of the tri-state area. Right. You have much to learn, Nick. <laughs> New the tri-state area, obviously, New York, New Jersey. <laughs> What's hold on? That was only the bi-state area. <laughs> and the third one. All I know about New York is the five boroughs: Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, and don't forget Staten Island. There it is. Uh, here's my okay. So, so this region of the country, then, and and we can just we can just focus on the Midwest if that makes it easier and exclude Pittsburgh. But I, I but like this is like a part of the country that I feel like has its own defined food culture. Mm -hmm. It very much fits into the chain we're discussing yes. today. Do you have any opinions on on Chicago eats or Midwest eats in general? Yeah, I mean, I will say that, and this is something I, I've kind of picked up from my parents who are from Ohio. Okay, and but you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, which is that their opinion of like pizza in the Midwest, especially like in the seventies and eighties and around then, was like you just don't want to fuck with like getting a pizza in Ohio. Mm. Especially because my mom grew up like in New Jersey and she was like, oh, there's like real pizza somewhere. Yeah. And like if you try, there's so many places. It's not like this anymore, though. Yeah, and I think that's also kind of like representative of this country as a whole, which is like maybe in the last 20 years, most places in this country have figured out how to make good food. Yeah, sure. But I don't know that that was true always. And there were certain like kind of deserts of uh culinary. How do I want to put this? Uh, waste. Yeah. Uh, where, but. You know, and I was kind of skeptical about this chain because I was like a pizza chain that's from Michigan, not really a hotbed yes. of uh, cuisine, especially pizza. But I think it's it's surprising now going back to these places, you can find really good. I mean, obviously, Chicago has always had very good food and very like disgustingly uh, decadent, like rich, heavy mm -hmm. food. Sure. Um, a lot of tubos up there. Hey man, you oh. said it. I would never <laughs> not say me. that. Not me. I would never say that. Say it on I'm the not record. afraid of them. I'm not afraid. <laughs> In fact, I feel great when I go to the Midwest. I've said this before because I feel more normal sized. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the king of Staten Island is sad that uh, uh, Staten Island summer is almost over? <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably that, you know. Yeah. I mean, it happens every year. Every year. We yeah, hear from like, the king. He comes down from his throne with a tear in his eye. His own seasonal affective disorder that mm -hmm. regards, you know, the Staten Island summer just finally ending. Yeah. yeah. You know it's going to end crazy, though. Oh, it will 100% will end, yeah. will end crazy. Mm. Let's and, hope. 
Have you seen the movies? I've seen none of them. I haven't. Seen I know of them. them. I haven't seen either of the movies. Oh, uh, you know that I'm talking about two movies. At yeah, least. I know there are sure. two movies. With I mean, Staten from our, the them. two kings of Staten Island. I mean, like the one, the titular king, Pete, yes. mm-hmm. and then you know the the man behind the curtain, Colin Jost. Yeah, that's right. That's they are. They are kind. Of, they are. There's Staten Island has two kings. Make it be. Let it be known here on the Doughboys right now mm-hmm. that Staten Island has two kings. When we were in San Diego and Mitch, you weren't a part of this uh, particular Uber ride. You're still driving down, mm-hmm. but me and and Neil and Fran. Uh, we're in a, and Amelia, I believe, we're all in a, an Uber, and we had, the driver was from Staten Island. Wow. And he was like, I was from the same projects as the Wu-Tang Clan. I was like, that's Whoa, wild. That's cool. Yeah, because I really guess cool. it's a very small sort of, you know, community there. And I'm, and he's also like, it's like no place else in the city. It's very strange. It's like, that's interesting. I'm sad Very that suburban, apparently. Nate, Wag's brother, Nate, wasn't at our San Diego show, and I was looking forward to hanging with him so much. He's, yeah. He's Alpha Wiger. He's that's like right. Alpha Wiger. Yeah. That and then great. you to like to, to <laughs> he's he's great. And then to to hammer at home, Nick shared a photo of um of him um with Cypress Hill. Yeah, Nate met Cypress and, Hill, which is so cool. He didn't come to a Dobo, our Doughboys live show because he was seeing Smashing Pumpkins. And then uh, I saw him shortly thereafter, and he uh, showed me a picture of him with Cypress Hill. I yeah. saw Cypress Hill play at Homer Palooza um, with the Springfield Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> As the Simpsons taught us so. So they actually, Cypress Hill, I guess, did a show with an orchestra. That's like a thing they do now. I wish that version, I mean, they sing it for a second on the uh, on that Simpsons yeah. it sounds, episode. It sounds awesome. It sounds cool. Yeah. No, I, I want to hear that version of it. Is it inspired by that moment? I don't know, but I have to kind of speculate that it's some, it's to some uh, from at some level comes from them having it be a joke on the Simpsons. Like, ah, oh, what if we actually did that? Yeah. There's yeah. probably a lot of people, myself included, who first, I mean, this is dorky, but it's also kind of my age. I first learned about Cypress Hill because they were on The Simpsons. Wow. You know, I wasn't listening to Cypress Hill when I was like nine or whatever. Sure. Joe, you're talking to uh, two guys who just did a karaoke episode where we sang karaoke songs. So <laughs> you're talking to the dorkiest two, the the king of the dorks, mm. Wags and I. We're did, the two, yes, we're the yeah. dork king. Did, so so did you do the Simpsons theme as one of your karaoke tracks? Oh man, that'd be oh. fun. That's a good idea. <laughs> and just make up the words to it. I think the only thing you say is like, uh, it, you do no. Homer saying dough. Right, yeah. yeah. But you gotta, if you nail then, it, the, ah! crowd's gonna go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, him screaming when Homer's the shriek is tougher than the dough. Ah! Yeah, it's too hard. I can't. Ah! Yeah, something like That's that. Pretty That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Try to get it off mic. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, the, the shriek made Wire yeah, Wire's fucking these fucked fucked Wager up. up. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a cough. By the way, let me say, you're tired. I'm fucking wired. <laughs> I'm wired. I'm crawling my hands and knees here. I'm I'm trying to pull you through the trenches. Really? Yeah. I'm not getting that. I'm fucking come with me. <laughs> Let's do this, baby. I got you on my back. Like That's Grogu. That's what's happening. That's yeah. That yeah. It it all makes sense now. Forgot like old Grogu. Grogu. Forgot we talked about Grogu. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, old old Grogu. <laughs> old Grogu. Aka Yoda. Yoda. Uh, while we're talking Midwest, I do want to ask you about mm-hmm. your podcast, which is sure. uh, "Who Cares About the Rock Hall." Yeah, you talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. which is, I think, uh, I think a lot of people kind of have that attitude of like, "Who gives a shit?" I'm sure that's Absolutely. why would be part of the genesis of the show. Yeah. but like, you're a defender <laughs> of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why is that? Yeah, to some extent, just because I feel like the ceremonies every year are very fun. Okay, but like they are on the far periphery of pop culture. Like, you guys probably, you know, go about your lives not even realizing that these ceremonies happen. And, like, they have huge people yeah. on them. Like, in the one coming up, like, Kate Bush might do her first, like, American performance in decades. Wow. Uh, but, and if that happens, maybe it'll get a little bit of press. But there's always, for me, it's, like, kind of the ideal concert, which is you watch, like, a short little documentary that hypes you up about the band getting inducted. Someone very famous comes out and gives a speech about how the band is amazing. Then the band says thank you, and then they play their three most famous songs, and then you go on to another iconic group or artist. Mm. That's fun as hell. That is yeah, cool. it's, ex- it's exactly, you know, sometimes I'll go and I'll see a band and I'm like, I maybe know five of their songs and I have to sit through like an hour and a half of like enjoying it, but there's nothing quite like, oh, this is... This is my favorite song. Like, I know I've heard this song a million times. Now they're playing it. Right. And to get that, like, seven times in a row, you know, because all these artists are basically getting, like, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Sure. It's amazing. Do you have, are there any, like, 
standout performances or standout inductions in your mind? Yeah, I mean, like the definitive one to the point where you guys have probably seen it. And it's one of those things that can only happen at the Rock Hall, which uh-huh. was uh, the year George Harrison got inducted. Prince was also being inducted. OK. And That's because cool. he was there, they asked him to do the guitar solo on While My Guitar Gently Weeps. I have seen this. Yes. Yeah. It's like one of the few things that has broken out of like kind of the rock hall like insider like oh yeah i've seen this because i follow the rock hall like people have seen that because that's like one of the greatest guitar solos of all time and it's like he's on stage with tom petty and jeff lynn from the electric light orchestra and george harrison's son and he just rips the most insane guitar solo at one point he falls backwards into the crowd and like there's just a guy ready to catch him like presumably someone on his payroll uh, but you don't know that. You just yeah. think he's like about to fall backwards. And then at the end of the solo, he throws his guitar in the air and it doesn't come down. Whoa. That's cool as hell. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I'm sure your listeners have seen it because it's like one of the best performances, just kind of period. There was like a cool guy up there and the guy was like, I got it. I think what it is is the camera angles don't show you the guitar oh. coming back down. It fell and killed someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lawsuit, so legally they couldn't show you. That it killed one of the guys from traffic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, Dave Matthews Band. I was. That's what I was googling on my phone. Mm-hmm. Have not been inducted into. Nominated the once. Yeah. In 2020, uh, very controversial because they were number one with a bullet on the fan vote, mm. and that was the year everybody found out that the fan vote uh, is meaningless. In the sense that it's rigged. In in the sense of it. Like every person can vote online and the top five vote getters comprise one ballot, which is then entered among like over a thousand ballots. Oh, so it's basically like the winner. It's purely, you know, it d- doesn't have actual any weight in the electoral no, system. No, it. It, it, it's very, very minuscule. But up until then, just kind of by coincidence, the number one vote getter always happened to get in anyway. And this is okay. the first year where that didn't happen. Everybody was really mad. Why um, no DMB? I'm Doesn't livid. DMB feel it? Do you think they'll get in? They will get in. It's just a little early. Oh, God. They, they, they were comparing them to the Dave D- D- Matthews Band to Susan Lucci in the article I was just saying. <laughs> how much, like, how, what, so what is the stretch? Because this is the thing, like, with, with. That's also, I just realized, like, Susan Lucci, like, the idea of Susan Lucci winning what, a daytime Emmy is what it yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was nominated, like, a bunch of years in a row and then finally won. Yeah. for And she was, what was she on? Uh, one of the soap operas, right? Days of Our Lives, Days maybe. Days of Our Lives, maybe, yeah. Um, but. Like how foreign of a concept that would be to even anyone who's like under 30. Right? Oh, yeah. No, I think a lot of young people that reference flies way over their heads. Right. Uh, so I'm I'm curious. OK, so uh, uh, because with with athletes, it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward with sports. It's like, OK, you retire and then, you know, five, ten years mm-hmm. pass yeah. after your playing days are done. And you're, you're... and oftentimes it's like when they like for for a lot of baseball players, right? Like if you, when you don't make the hall, like after a couple of times, it's like you can't. Like you, can't. yeah. There's a limit of how many times you can be on the ballot. right? There's a limit yeah. of how many times you can and be on the ballot. Baseball but also, writers are also like, we won't induct him because he took steroids. Yes, yeah. Insane. They're they're little they're weird little fuddy duddies. But like, there's yeah. also a really clear entry point. And like you were yes. saying, DMB, it's too early for them. So there is a, yeah. the eligibility happens 25 years after your first released recording. Got it. So they became. Dave Matthews Band became eligible in, I want to say, 2019, uh, and then got get on their ballot their second year of eligibility. And, you know, I don't know. There's yeah. there, there's a lot of great bands. It takes them, like, 15 years to even get in. When's Marin going to be eligible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once once we get a podcast. Uh, Man, maybe podcast He just goes up there and does, does his three best bits. Gets introduced introduced by like yeah. uh, Barack Obama. Yeah, interviews <laughs> Obama interviews uh, Mencia <laughs> <laughs> and says lock the gates. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, man, podcast Hall of Fame sounds so bad. Now. I feel like it will happen. We should just do it. Yeah, and we just did it. If we, if we, if we it. get ahead of it and just like podcast Hall of Fame, and also the first winners of the, the Doughboys, and also it's our hall, <laughs> and then you close it. <laughs> yeah, no more inductions. <laughs> Fuck, we should get. We should maybe we should bleep this. We should try to. We should yeah. try to <laughs> get, on, get on the URL. Get the copyrights. 
We just need a we just need a city to like put it in because Cleveland is like a good fit for the Rock Hall mm-hmm. of Fame because it's like it's like a major city and you can get to it. Yeah, and but it's also a some, little bit you there's know like some history with like their radio like there's a guy named Alan Freed who was okay. like a radio DJ who was like one of the first people to some say he coined the term rock and roll so, and also the the reality is the city of Cleveland really pushed for it because they really wanted it. That's what that's what I think it is is like you don't like because like it, it, all these these Hall of Fames and, and you know a lot of the sports ones are in like pretty small podunk cities mm-hmm. but like you don't want it to be in like the biggest city because then it won't be the main attraction right you want it in a, in a second tier city like Cleveland or something yes yeah, so I got a city this, yeah Jonestown <laughs> <laughs> I think that's perfect for the podcast <laughs> that's excellent that's great that's excellent absolutely um but I bet I, I was just gonna say if, if we googled podcast hall of fame I wouldn't be shocked if like someone has already someone's already squatting on it Someone's squatting on Podcast Hall of Fame. I think we should do it. Who the fuck's got hop? Who the fuck's got Podcast Hall of Fame? Podcasthof.com. Please help us honor all of the current and previous inductees. What the fuck is this? A site. This site is hosted by Matt Kowalik. <laughs> <laughs> when when we met up in in uh well when we were playing the same city in in Michigan. That's right. Um. Sorry, looking at the inductees, like, you guys may have been inducted. It's like, it's just like Hollywood Handbook. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. Better show than us, but yeah. we, uh, it's maybe, it's maybe it's within our realm to get a, uh, inducted into the podcast yeah. Hall of Fame. This, this feels. We already have an iHeart Radio Award. I think this is like a joke from the best show. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. No, we got to, we should actually do it. Right. Yeah. Do it for real. Yeah. Have a, yeah, groundbreaking ceremony. Cut a big ribbon. Put in like Laughlin, Nevada. They'll be like thrilled. The local guy was like, "Yeah, we we love having the podcast Hall of Fame here in Laughlin." We're changing our name to Laughlin <laughs> in honor <laughs> in honor of the podcast Hall of Fame. Wait, hold on. We just listened to Doughboys. We're changing it to No Laughlin. <laughs> <laughs> so you went from Laughlin to No Laughlin? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. All right. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk a little bit about pizza because that we're going to talk about mm, pizza chain mm-hmm. today, and I'm curious your your pizza preferences just in general. Yeah, I I love pizza. I, I would I would maybe put it at number one favorite food. That's like Mitch. Yeah, pizza it's is hard to my beat. Favorite. Yeah. It's hard to beat. Uh, and I I do prefer a kind of New York style thin sure. crust. Sure, yeah, mm-hmm. naturally. I think it's hard to hard to beat. And that was that's one like. Thing in in Pittsburgh, I feel like that's the last place when you're like going west, where I feel like you can get a good like New York style. Mm, thing, right? At least when I was growing up. What would you for LA pizza? You like New York style? What's your favorite LA pizza? I have a I have a I yeah I like tomato pie. Tomato pie is good. A lot. Uh, they do have a Joe's here. I've been to the Joe's. I've, I've had Joe's. Like yeah. a New York, New York place. Yeah, uh, and I think that's that's pretty good. Those I have I have I have I have a, I have a I have a number one pizza place for this style of pizza. Look, okay. You can get like fancier pizza or, or different pizza. Oh man, there's actually I have I have I have two options actually. But yeah, no, those are those are the two that come to mind: tomato pie and Joe's. In terms of like, they're kind of close to me, and I feel like they're they're solid. I think I, Garage Pizza is also pretty solid. Garage is good. Garage is t- to me is like a good late night spot. Yeah, it's open. It's open. Yeah, you can get it. You can get Garage at like three in the morning mm-hmm. sometimes. Um, but my 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 first is like like a hey this is like a del- like a delivery place that has and, I, and there's a few locations but Prime Pizza is now Prime is good yeah Prime okay. is now my number I've enjoyed Prime that's my that's I think that's my 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 number one but then for a fancier spot Steve Aoki's Pizza <laughs> Steve Aoki yeah. Pizza Aoki is not my number one <laughs> did we have it ever. We did. We never had it. We should have it because we, we had a ghost kitchen phase where we we're trying them. Right. Pizza Oki is is like a big, also just like he is chain restaurant royalty. Yeah, Benny Hanna. His father founded Benny Hanna. I went to to a Dodgers game and this blew my mind. Yeah, California Pizza Kitchen was the official pizza of the Dodgers. Wow. Okay. And I was like, this is insane to me. <laughs> this is like a chain that feels like it's like about to die. Yeah, I mean, they may have just decided that's a prudent investment of like we're just gonna have that mm-hmm. as that is, you know it's it's I don't know it's interesting the official I don't even hate of sports teams CBK is fine CBK is honestly like when I yeah. think about CBK I'm like you could get like decent salads there too yeah, it wasn't sure. all about the anyway um, quarter sheets great yes. sit down pizza spot okay, I haven't quarter, quarter sheets is very good man so good I went there recently um, and oh my god 
but that's the Detroit like style. Do they do <laughs> one quarter portion? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to move on, but we should sit in the Uncar Plunt. Yeah, we should think about Uncar Plunt. What were you saying? I was, I was... Oh, quarter sheets. Like I, I got the Detroit style. Do they yeah. do more than that? Uh, yeah, they 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 actually do a, a bar pizza there, which okay. I haven't tried. But I talked to the owner for a little while. You I went to Uncar. <laughs> Oh, you're kind of like Steve Aoki. You're kind of using your celebrity to make a pizza chain. That's cool. <laughs> the owner, he first of all loved pizza. We yeah. talked. We, we talked bar pizza for a long time, right. and uh, I, I you actually tried to take a slice of his pizza, and he's like, "That's mine." <laughs> I'm trying to plug quarter sheets, uh-huh. a local yeah, LA luck. spot that's fucking <laughs> fantastic. It is. It, it immediately. Really I, I, I'm gonna say like it like moved up to like oh this is like my favorite pizza in LA. And this is a newer place, right? It's, it's like fantastic. Yeah, it's just like, Not uh, far from here, even, Wags. I got to try it out. I've heard good things. You're a West Sider. You don't give a shit. But Prime Pizza, great delivery, like great delivery pizza. Yeah, and it's a small chain. They've got a few of them. So, yeah, you know I've what? had it. Good wings, too. You get, they, they Not have, bad they, wings, They have yeah. decent yeah. wings. Yeah. For, they, they do a good job. Wow. Do you have a favorite pizza chain? Um, You know, I grew up uh, a Pizza Hut. Kid. Okay. Wow. That was my family too. Yeah, we were a Pizza Hut family. I we're mean, Pizza Hut families, both. Yeah. Of you? Well, because okay, my dad was too cheap to get delivery, and the Pizza Hut was closer, so we mm-hmm. went to Pizza Hut all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, we were we were a carryout family. Yeah. I, I feel like Domino's dominated the delivery world, right? Like they were so much more the delivery pizza place. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm trying to remember I the that, the but... stats. I I forget. I I've got it flipped in my head as to which one is the biggest in the U. Because the one the biggest in the U.S. is not the biggest worldwide. They're mm. back. They're backwards. But I can't. I forget which one is Pizza Hut and which one is Domino's. I think Pizza Hut may be the biggest worldwide, but not the biggest in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Where are we going to Villa Rosa, rest in peace, one of my favorite restaurants uh, in Quincy. Mm-hmm. That was carryout. But if we, I think we got like Domino's or maybe even Papa Gino's we get uh, uh, delivered. Papa Gino's also, I feel like, is on its way out, sadly. Yeah. Local, the, well, that was a, that's a, a, that's a victim spots. of the, uh, you know, we, we've talked about Robert Earl before, the guy, the yeah. Planet Hollywood guy. Well, who, that's Bertucci's Marshall, but yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bertucci's. Bertucci's so, so Papa Gino's has not been befallen Papa Gino's by the has same not, thing. No, I don't think it's, I don't think, I don't think Earl's gotten his fucking yeah. nasty little hands on it yeah. yet. But you had Papa Gino's when we did that show with Hodgman yes, at the, that festival. Uh, that was a weird, like, remote outlet in Western Mass. So I'm not sure if I got the pure Papa Gino's yeah. experience, but it was, it was fine. I Emma, think is fine. Papa Gino's, big thumbs up. Come on. I mean, I haven't had it since I was like ten, but I loved it as a kid. <laughs> it's uh, it's this is the I'll same. I'll take that. Yeah, this is the same chain as D'Angelo, right? Same mm-hmm. company. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah, I like D'Angelo a lot. Yeah, you ever had D'Angelo? I don't know it. No, it's like a sandwich chain that I guess is New England. Is it? Is it just Boston or is it all in New England? Pittsburgh's not a part of New England. Yeah, so I must know it if it's New England. Yeah, I mean you get the, <laughs> you live in both the New England and in the Midwest, the best of both worlds. It's Steel City. They got Permantis. Yeah, mm, man. Permant. We've talked about Permantis before. Fries. Have you had it? No, I haven't. Have you guys had it? No. The thing about Permantis, it it is like the most famous. It's like the only signature restaurant i guess in mm-hmm. pittsburgh it's like the one you think of if there's mm-hmm. if there's anything but it wasn't like there were a ton of locations there were just right. like a few and the first time i had it was when they opened one at pnc park the the baseball park that's i i've never had i've always that's like I, even in my early food days it sounds like when i was like first getting into music mm-hmm. when i was like first <laughs> looking up food Romantis is like a You're place. putting a hamburger up to your ear like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. Speaking of which, I also remember reading about the Rothless Burger, which I think like some oh, places in mm. Pittsburgh made. Yeah. Um, uh, Rothless Burger sandwich. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it. But mm-hmm. Romantis is one. I think Romantis is on Gold Belly, but it's like if there's fries on it, I don't want to. Look, yes, the I whole gimmick is a sandwich fries, with fries, of it. course, yes. and coleslaw. Yeah. That's the that's the one they don't you don't see talk People about as much, but coleslaw much, yeah. and fries. That's mm. like the signature, and it's good. It tastes good. A Rothless burger. Uh, all right, so what is a Rothless burger sandwich? It includes gra- sausage, ground meat, a fried egg, American cheese, onion, lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Oh, that's, it's seven. That sounds excessive. Yeah, it's that sounds lot. like too much stuff. I don't know. I kind of like the sound of it. I think it's it's also much. fun. I like the I I like the local thing. 
of like we're gonna name a sandwich after our mm-hmm. unfortunately after, after yeah after our, <laughs> our disgrace <laughs> yeah Piece I mean shit not there I mean yeah. they they <laughs> they love him there <laughs> he did no wrong uh, I worked uh, used to work at parking lots in like as an attendant in Pittsburgh and I worked at one near Jerome Bettis's restaurant whoa so, wow. yeah and that did not last long but you know that also seems like a nightmare job parking lot guy seems like it's a tough well were you valeting or were you no i was not valeting and honestly it was uh relatively chill because you just sat in a booth usually you're not interacting with anyone you would go stretches especially if the lot was like full which would happen a lot but yeah it's just kind of car comes up they give you the money you press the button gate goes up they go inside it sounds rel- relatively chill. Probably on occasion, some someone's mad because they're because they have to pay or something. Or... Yeah, or they're or like the lot's full and they're like, "Come on, let me in." Oh, sure. And I'm yeah. like, "Well, it's full. I'm not like it's not like a joke. Yeah. Like you, yeah. there's no place for you to go." Yeah. He's like, "Hey, come on." <laughs> for me, I don't I don't know you. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like read a book or you know listen to music. That's fun. I worked at a Quincy Auto Auction. I worked I worked uh, where I, any I, basically my job was just like get cars from the hill. And we had like a little shit car that we went up in, but then they'd like they'd auction off cars that they told. I think I told this before, and it's also grim. Uh-oh. Like a man blew his head off in Jesus. a car, and then it was yeah. like sitting in the summer sun. And you went and mm-hmm. retrieved it. And like they had, I didn't like go in and be like, "Ooh, this is gross in here." Like yeah. that didn't happen. <laughs> sure, but like it was. You're like, "Ooh, lot. this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Can we get more of these." <laughs> But like, yeah, like weird, grim things like that, of course, happen too because it would be reclaimed cars or whatever. Yeah, and but, your job, you were the wrangler. You like wrangled I was like these the cars. Car, I was like, I was like the assistant car guy. Okay. So they're like, and they, and also like a, a dealership owned it. So like, they'd be like, we need like, uh, and that's how I. That's where my love of Altimas came from, Wags. <laughs> your famous mm, love of my Altimas. famous. I have, I've had, I've had, I've literally only had two cars in my entire life. Wow. Both Altimas. Both Altimas. Wow. A gold yeah. Ultima and a silver Ultima. Wow. I feel like I should go bronze Ultima for the last mm-hmm. one, right? I, I feel like I have to do the yeah. three. Yeah. And then I should be done with life around somewhere <laughs> around there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I that's because I, I drove Ultimas and Maximas and like VW Bugs. It was it was a it was a guy who owned an uh, like a an, uh, what's it called a dealership. But what is your day to day? You're like, hey, like, hey, we need these cars. We go up in the little shit car. We bring them down, and then they like drive them off. To like the from a lot. You, you yeah, pick them it was up like a lot? lot full of hundreds of cars. Okay, I got it, got it. Yeah. And so you just retrieve those individual cars and drive them over to the yeah. And then there was also place. an got auction it. on Sundays or something like that mm, too for the got other it. cars. Yeah. You ever get to be the auctioneer? Uh, yeah, but I didn't talk fast enough at all. <laughs> they get mad. Okay, here we go. This one's on sale here. Here we go. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, the so guys are doing an accent. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, this one over here, and they get the car. <laughs> That's why I didn't last long. I was. Yeah. It's like, uh, why does Mish become Italian when he has to be an auctioneer? <laughs> I sold it to this uh, fellow right here with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> the Italians are good when they're frantic with Mario when the time is up that sort of thing. Yeah. Um I uh yeah I I I never I never got to auction. I don't think I could speak I think that they would be like they I think I can't speak quick enough to it's do that. I think you skill. actually could do it. I could but you you also have to be processing everyone's bids. That's the part that's like uh, can I get five dollars? I get five dollars. Five dollars over here. Ten dollars over here. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Can I get ten dollars? Fifteen, 15, 15 over here. Fifteen, fifteen, twenty. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Twenty-five. 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 25. <laughs> I hear twenty-five. Twenty. Twenty-five going once. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty to the gentleman in the red. Thirty. Can I hear thirty? Thirty-five. Thirty-five over here. Thirty-five. Thirty-four. Forty. Forty-five. Forty-five. Fifty. Fifty-five. Fifty. Sixty. Sixty-five. And 70, 75. sold. Sonic flashlight goes to this man over here for fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's me in a mustache. Yeah. I stuck down there somehow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're running back and forth. You ran down yeah. there too. You've been you've been upping the bidding yourself. <laughs> It's, it's a room no one's with, there. No one's there. <laughs> it's in a dark basement. <laughs> I need to try this product first. <laughs> Box the sonic flashlight. You young man, go fetch the sonic flashlight up the hill. <laughs> oh, can I hear one nut? One nut? One nut? Two nuts? Two nuts? Three nuts? Oh, so old. <laughs> Uh, Look, we got a lot to discuss, so we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more Doughboys. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Spoon Man. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and immune system support, but I hated taking pills, vitamins, and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. 
You can take AG1 in the morning before starting your day, and it'll make you feel like you're doing something good for your body, like you're giving your body the nutrition it craves. You know, Mitch, it's hard for me to come up with a supplement routine that comes with a bunch of different products, but AG1 makes that so much easier. That's right, Wags. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. AG1 is powerful because it's so easy to fit into your lifestyle. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. AG1 gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. My AG1 is delivered to me every month, right to my door. Wow. So it's been super easy to make it a daily habit. I just take a little packet, pour it into some cold water, mix it up, take it down. I feel like I can take on the world, baby. And if you're on the go, as you often are, Mitch, they also have single-serving travel packs, so you never have to miss a day. All you have to do is mix the powder into ice cold water and drink it first thing each morning. That's it. I'm always on the go. I get up, get ready, and I head to the bathroom. With AG1, taking care of your body each day is really that simple. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. That's athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. Check it out. Check it out. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Spoon Man. You know, Wags, the most important people in my life, they're my cats, Wally and Irma. Aww. You know it. You know it's true. Well, Wally and Irma are dining like royalty thanks to our next sponsor, Smalls. That's right, Smalls. Smalls. If you're a listener of the show, you know that Mitch's cats cannot live without Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed and made with preservative-free ingredients you'll find in your fridge, and it's delivered right to your door. That's right. Hey, do you remember how stinky and smelly my old cat food was, Wags? I can describe it in two letters. P-U. That's right. I used to leave the house smelling like cat food, and Wags would say, you can't come into the studio smelling like cat food. You're going to scare off our guests. That was, I was, our, we had a, we'd have a dog as a guest. They'd run right out of the studio. <laughs> exactly. Now you can finally open up a packet of cat food and not get nauseous. And actually, Mitch, you and I both recognize the ingredients in a packet of Smalls food. Yeah, we're looking at the ingredients. We're going, hmm. All right, okay. It's good. Uh, Yeah, Wally, this month's sh- uh, shipment didn't come. <laughs> After making the switch to Smalls, cat owners are seeing some big improvements in their cats. 78% of cat owners reported their cats had shinier and softer fur, and 90% reported overall health improvements. Wags, Wally and Irma are so shiny, so smooth, you can barely hold them. They slip out of your hand like soap. I'm also reading 100% of cat owners are reporting their cats were adorable fluff balls. It's true. The team at Smalls is so confident your cat will love your product that you can try it risk-free. That means they will refund you if your cat won't eat their food. Smalls is the food I give my cats. So if you want to give it a try, head to smalls.com slash doughboys and use promo code doughboys at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code doughboys. Do it. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Joe Quazala discussing Hungry Howie's Pizza, the home of the flavored crust pizza, which was opened in 1973 in Taylor, Michigan. First franchise in 1982, and today has over 500 locations, which makes it the 11th largest pizza chain in America. Isn't that wild? Wild, yeah. That's insane. I'd never heard of it. Yeah, a place that, well, this was actually, Joe, you did a little bit of of research, Mm -hmm. and you found some spots that were, like, of note that were in the L.A. area that we'd never covered. And this was one of the places you pitched. Right. Which I appreciate the effort. Yeah, I just, you know, I I enjoy this program quite a bit. And I thought, like, I don't want to do one you've already done before, but I want to do one of the bigger chains that's still kind of on the list. Yeah. And one that would not be, you didn't have to go to, like, Irvine to, to, to get to. And this place, to my surprise, had a location in Glendale. That's right. There's one in Glendale. And the Shocking. next closest one is in Tehachapi, which I know is a, about a three-hour drive away because it's where my grandparents used to live. Okay. So there are not a, not a lot in the L.A. area. Yeah. Which one did you go to? Oh, you, you went to <laughs> <laughs> Visited my grandparents' graves and <laughs> ate some Hungry Howies. Have a slice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Hungry Howies will make them not want to come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you never had this because I'd never had this. I had never even heard of it. Yeah. Uh, and then after the fact, I was like, oh, we and I even looked it up. There was a Hungry Howie's down the street from where we were in Royal Oak. That's wild. They're all over Michigan. Obviously, that's like where the where it originated. So. Yeah, they're, they're, it's very popular in the Midwest. I don't know if this is one of those chains where it's like they actually love it in the Midwest or it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, they're Hungry Howie's. They're around, you know, if it's just kind of like mid-tier still even I think there. there's love for it. There's I, love I for think, it. Okay. I think Michigan has pride for, for Hungry Howie. I'm sorry. We put up a picture of the weird little boy and none of us can stop staring into his <laughs> I, 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 eyes. I'm staring at him. <laughs> to me, I, I don't know if this reference will work for all of our listeners, but it, he looks like Dave Ferguson got Cool Worlded. He does... <laughs> He does look like our friend Dave Ferguson from the Birthday Boys got sucked into Cool World. He's, he, he's, he's 100% effort. He, he looks Christian, and I know that doesn't make any sense. No, but it, it makes total sense. That was my first thought is that he looks like a young Republican. Mm -hmm. Like he looks like a like a guy who would like sign up for the conservative club in middle school. Yes. Yeah. Um, he Like a Christian Dennis the Menace. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he, he does look like a Christian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like... Funny that you turn to insults instead of arguing with me and, and term, <laughs> on, uh, instead of engaging with my ideas. Like, all right. <laughs> Funny you turn to personal attacks. <laughs> I could see him being like a reformed, like, you know, one of these kind of white extremist guys who was reformed to. Oh, sure. He's like, I'm just trying to right. live my life now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, a, like I'm, I'm like a God will forgive me sort of guy or something like that, mm. which did happen to some white nationalists. You think he's a master yes. gardener? He might be the master. You think he, this is the master he gardener? He might be the master gardener. <laughs> oh wow! Wait, what is Master Gardener? Uh, it's a Paul Schrader film that came out this year, and it's like a, a uh, it's a uh, Joel Edgerton, right? And he's like a okay. reformed white supremacist who's now, now a master gardener. I think. I think. You think he's, uh, this guy's a fucking incredible gardener? <laughs> yeah, I he's think he's trying to make peace for make amends for all his white supremacist actions. He's hungry. His name's Howie. His name's hungry. His name's Howie's hungry, and if you take that red shirt off, he's just got a bunch of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> White problematic tattoos. tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, his hair is too shiny too. I don't know what's going on. Looks like he put his head in like the bowling ball shiner. Look, yeah, it's not an appealing character design. It's a little unsettling. It's a little uncanny valley, especially for if I may, a pizza place like big fat Italian guy or bust. Yeah. I it should be a big fat Italian guy. He shouldn't be a little toe headed boy. And he it also like. The logo doesn't look like a real logo. It looks like a like a fake logo they'd make in like a Kevin Smith movie. Yes. Yeah. Are you guys familiar with the original Hungry Howie's logo? I um, think I've seen this. I think I saw this in my research. That I looks, don't know if I know it. That looks even less real uh, because it's just like perverted almost here. I'll show you, Mitch. Oh my god! <laughs> it looks it here, that's wider. horrifying. Oh yeah, okay. So he's got like kind of black sludge all over his face <laughs> and a, a an outstretched tongue and his lip licking it up. Yeah, is that like wh is that supposed to be like goo or is that his mouth? No, that's I can't it. Tell. That's, the thing is, it's like they tried to draw it without drawing. Like, have you ever tried to like when you first got a computer? Like, I'm gonna make a drawing out of like using shapes. Yes, instead yeah. of like actually drawing. And so, yeah, his it's supposed to be his mouth is open and his tongue is like licking his lips, but his mouth is too, it's like too widely open. And also the like... The pizza sauce also is black or brown. <laughs> well, his head is sticking out of the of middle the of a pizza. In the middle of a black pizza. Makes it look like a manhole. Yes. Um, And that's disturbing. But also like the flecks of like spit that are supposed to be coming off of his tongue are black. And that's pretty horrifying. This yeah, is like a Robert Crumb sauce. illustration. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that's <laughs> really unnerving. Awful. Yeah. And so yeah, they they polished him <sighs> the, up. The new one, I guess, is it's shiny. You're right. It is very shiny. He also looks like like maybe it's just all one big tooth that he has. It doesn't look like he has individual yeah. teeth. Uh, like I can't see this guy chewing a pizza. I feel like he just swallows it whole. But uh, he is he's he, there's something unsettling about him. His the way his eyes are angled. There's nothing about. Mm -hmm. This mascot that I like. It's I like guess. the Mona Lisa where you try to move and he's always staring at you. <laughs> With his big grin. Hi. Uh, yeah, there that is definitely yes. but I wonder, is there even a commercial is like does Howie I couldn't find any video of him in like an animation or anything. And like, like none that. of the Maybe founders yeah. I couldn't find that like Howie was the name of the founder's no. son or anything. No, it was completely it's it's just it, it seems to just be an arbitrary, like probably just the just the alliteration of hungry Howie is where it came from. That's all they needed. Yeah.
Yeah, there he's is really really unsettling about it. You're right. I I don't, I, don't I, I may request that we take it down at one point because I can't <laughs> stop. I'm it's, not gonna be able to focus. I'm transfixed, and also like, do you, you kind of have the feeling if we stared at him long enough, we'd all fall in love with him? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say that. <laughs> Hungry Howie is perfect. <laughs> I wish I was. I wish I was Howie. Uh, let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about the meal we had. So, the, Joe, uh, we I'm told you how I flesh like on a one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if we all stare at him long enough, we'll all become hungry. Eyes. Yeah, that's really. I was more on the lines of Mitch than falling in love with him. <laughs> but hey, that's that's your journey. Whatever. Um, yeah, no, it really. I I maybe would worship. Uh, I would I would kill I would sacrifice something for in his honor. Howie. Yeah, in a in a cloud atlas future, that would, people would me. everyone would worship Hungry Howie. <laughs> I'm hungry <laughs> for we'll flesh. Please, we'll please to Hungry Howie. Pray to Hungry Howie. Um, let's talk. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the the actual food here. So, Joe, we we kind of ended up in a situation where we're like, it we can't get it delivered here. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we ended up in a thing where we were able to bring it to the studio, but what this was like, we had two records today, so we had it yeah. earlier, so we kind of had it on our own here. Yes. You also got it on your own. I did. Yeah. Uh, and because, yeah, it, because it was in that one location, also because I wanted to, like, try a lot of the stuff For on the sure. menu, I got a bunch of friends together at a park that was, like, across the street. Wow. Oh, my uh, God. And, or, and like, a, a dozen friends, we were like, let's have whatever the fuck Hungry Howie's is. And so we we I think we had a good sampling of the wow. menu. Well, Doughboys will cover up to fifty dollars of that. So <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. No. no. No, send it no, send us your receipt. We'll 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 cover that, of course. Um that's awesome. I love that. Cause yeah, I think that's 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 like how to experience a place like this. And we did something kind of similar, although we did make some cuts to our order because we realized it had gotten kind of bloated and we felt good or we felt uh like I guess less bad when we did that because Apparently, there was one guy working at this location. That's, so I picked it up. Yeah. And that was the case on Labor Day. Uh, I felt very bad because I ordered a ton of shit yeah. at like 3 p.m. I don't right. think he was expecting. Uh, and I felt like yeah, it was just one one dude. You know, this is like a, there's no seating. There, this is like no, a little no, Caesars a kiosk. Yeah. type place where you can just go in and, and pick it up. I gotta tell you, this gathering sounds kind of like Jonestown in a way. The, just your friends all coming <laughs> mm -hmm. and all wearing eating the same this. shoes. <laughs> if, if I if I saw this, if I saw Hungry Howie boxes, I'd be like, "What's happening here? Is yeah, is everything okay?" The answer was no. <laughs> <laughs> it was also inside Hungry Howie's. Everything is very yellow, which is not very appetizing. Yes, that that's what should, the dominant color is yellow, like a really a harsh yellow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm realizing Hungry Howie does look a lot like the Doughboys. You, you got the shine. Oh, you do have the shine. You have the shine too, Mitch. What the fuck? Holy fuck. Are, are we Hungry Howies? Did Wait, we get that, Howie? We, I was afraid of becoming Hungry Howie, and we just are Hungry Howies. <laughs> oh, Van Arts, Dylan. I think I know where you fucking grabbed the graphic from. Yeah, he would fit right in. We just put him in the middle. We should put him in the middle. Never acknowledge him. <laughs> Our three friends. If you put him in the middle, it just looks like Ferguson is guesting on the yeah. show. Yeah, do that next time he's on the show. <laughs> um, wow. But, yeah. So you, okay, so you had a bunch of people together. You, you tried a bunch of things. I yes. guess, should we start with the pizza? Because, you know, this, this again, their, their big thing is flavored crust pizza. They call themselves the home of the flavored crust pizza. Flavored crust pizza is on all of their, like, packaging. You're trying to They're get really the good out of the it. way first. Well, I think this is a pizza place, so the pizza is the yeah. most important. So I'll say you know, this: yeah. walking into this record late, I had a rum. Well, actually, I wasn't. I was late to lunch meetup. I yes. wasn't late to uh, whatever to the actual record. Though, did it push things back? Maybe, Casey. I don't know, Casey. <laughs> it's not for me to tell. Casey's shaking his head. Um, I was at home. I had tummy issues again. I've been having tummy issues a lot recently. Yeah. Uh, had tummy issues. Came here immediately. Had to eat. How hungry, hungry Howie's, Howie's, which is a true nightmare. The first bite I had was of the bee sting pizza. Yeah, that's what they're pushing right now. And I was like, I said to Nick, is Hungry Howie's good? And then he said, well, just you wait. <laughs> I said, keep eating, my boy. That's what you said. <laughs> yeah. Keep eating, my boy. Yes. Wise words. Because yeah. I think my bite of the night was that bee sting pizza, and I went downhill from there. Yeah. And not just downhill. like. I fell downhill and uh, face first. The, my tummy troubles followed after me. I was 
at the bottom of that hill, I was covered in I was covered in shit. <laughs> <laughs> the bee sting pizza is a cupped pepperoni, jalapeno, uh-huh. and hot honey drizzle. And we got one half with the Disco Inferno crust and one half mm. with the butter crust. Now, me, I'm a bit of a heat seeker, so I like the hot honey. I like the jalapeno. However, I'm not eating pork, so like I didn't, I, I, I peeled off my peps and uh, and just had it at like, like that. I still think that it was a, a good slice of pizza, though I think missing the salt, it became of the pepperoni, became like a little too sweet. But I did really like that Disco Inferno crust. That had a nice, nice. I like the Disco Inferno crust to too, yeah. and I actually, I mean, I like did think that the Hungry House pizza. I was like, if you got like f- six of these types of pizzas and you shared them between people, I think that I would be okay with it. I think we had made a great mistake, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, because that's more or less what I did was get a bunch of pizzas. Because part of it was, you know, these flavored crusts are not an upcharge. It's no. just like part of the deal. Yes. Like get a flavored crust. It's it's why you would come here. And so, yeah, we got we got a few pizzas with the with tr- tried to get because there's also a lot of options for the flavored crust. Yes. We we got the bee sting with the sesame crust and yeah. the ranch crust. And we also got a medium uh, with just the cup pepperoni, which they claim, I think, to have invented. Mm. I don't know about that. But, Seems like something hungry how he would say. Yeah. I invented it. Honest. <laughs> Fucking lie. I'm the first person to sing reggae music. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're clearly not hungry, Howie. I invented the blues. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, hungry Howie. Uh, all right. A little suspicious, but okay. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> uh, the classic cupped pepperoni with a butter cheese crust and a Cajun crust. And then we opted for a thin crust because we, we were just yes. trying to get kind of the this is... the options here. And I didn't realize it was going to be like thin crust, kind of like tavern style, like basically yes. no crust at the end because we did get the Disco Inferno crust and the garlic herb crust. That just kind of meant they sprinkled it on the edge of the pizza because there was no, no not crust work. No. to do it. Even though that option was there, uh, eh, you know. Um, but yeah, just having these pizzas and sharing it with friends – uh, and also like it was hot and ready. We went to like a park a minute away from the place. And when I did get to Hungry Howie's, yeah, the, the guy working was sweating. He wasn't done yet. Um, but pizzas, I would say was good. We, we were all, everybody was very excited about eating the pizza. And I thought the, the novelty of the crust was fun. I think the, the, so I think the, their regular crust, their original crust with the, the, um, uh, the flavored crust on the uh, uh, ring is is good and is solid. I did not love their thin crust. We got a thin crust. We got now half look, veggie and half cheese. This is Wag's mistake. How dare you? Whoa. You know how there's Ray's mistake, the drink? It's actually good at yeah. Tiki T. This is, this is your version, the Wag's mistake. You said we should get a thin crust pizza. We should have gotten a thin crust you, pizza. You know, I'm not, saying you, I'm not saying you were wrong, but this is a scenario where neither of us enjoyed it. And yes. I felt bad because I said... I didn't want the bee sting on thin crust, which I didn't. Yeah. And I'm happy that I stood by mm-hmm. that because- wise, A wise move once again. Because we did half cheese, half veggie pizza, yeah. thin crust. And maybe travel issues, but like, look, Domino's thin crust blows this fucking thing out of the water. That's the it's thing. Insane. Domino's thin crust is the same approach, and it's a much better version. This yeah. was just a, a a limp imitation. I found it really unsatisfying. I, I think I, we the, should never have got. It was a mistake. I'm not saying it's. I'm yeah. not saying it's your. I'm, it, it was a mistake. We shouldn't have gotten. If in, I hindsight. In, in hindsight, in but hindsight, but I'm hindsight. glad we tried it. But yeah, it, it, we were just kind of, and especially with all the moisture from the vegetables and the veggie side, it was just like it was just like a wet paper towel. Well, the veggie pizza again, like for my stomach was killing, and like for like I was like, oh, it's nice to have just any veggies at all. So I kind of enjoyed the veggie pizza a little more mm-hmm. than I did other things because you liked nutrients. I, th- <laughs> there, was, there was there was some sort of nutrient. There was a nutrient <laughs> on it at least. Yeah, give me a single nutrient, I'll be yeah. happy. Uh, but 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 the, the just the thin crust was was bad. I'll say this too. I I love I I I really like the bee sting and I was very excited for mm-hmm. the rest of the meal. Very sticky, like reaching into uh, the Mitchell sock draw. <laughs> it's a fucking sticky, <laughs> sticky situation. It's a sticky. It's a. The box was as soon as you open the box, like and put your hand. You're like I have fucking hot honey all over my fingers. I made it sticky. <laughs> Howie. Howie, Howie, special honey. <laughs> what? 
Allie, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I like making my honey <laughs> just for you, Mike Mitchell. What? I'm going to stop asking you questions about this, Howard, because I'm afraid of what the answers are. Yeah, I mean, it it, it did – it was it – was, it, was kind of an unfortunate, uh, and this was my favorite thing, which I which I did think was good. I was like, mm-hmm. "Hungry Howie's is good." Yeah, I is, had no yeah. idea. And then we really went out. Those are the only two pizzas we got. Well, was okay, the, so was the thin crust and the uh, yeah, and we got the thin crust as well. But I don't think I got to try it. Uh, but it I, was it was popular amongst my friends. I say. started with a thin crust cheese, and you know we we did admit you were you were dealing with some some issues. So you said we could just start eating, which was very nice of you. And so I had it a little, what was a little bit fresher. And I still think just like just said you had away from me. No, <laughs> I still think that that even <laughs> it, even in that state, it was just kind of underwhelming as thin sure. crust pizzas go. And I wish we'd just gotten the original crust. I, we should have just gotten an original crust cheese. Honestly, that would have been a good baseline. That's the way that you. Have. That's yeah. what you have to do. That's how you mm-hmm. judge a pizza we should, place. We fucked up. We should Let's always do that with our. Uh, hey, I, I'd Let's, go to look. I'd go to this place again. I'd try it we, again. Look, we I'd fuck, make we, different decisions. I would we, as well. We we had we had a order a, like a, an order going for pizza and it was gigantic. It was too big, and so we cut down on the, a lot of items. But I think we still held on to what we wanted the most. And Amelia actually got one of the items that I had nixed, which I was happy about. Well, okay, because I want to try it. So, so we got the stuffed bread cheese, yeah. which this to is, me this is one of the things I was interested in. To me, this was my highlight. Well, I think this was the best thing I and had. And this was not the Howie bread, or this is this the is the bread? Howie bread okay. stuffed, stuffed with Howie cheese. Bread, it's yeah. like the three okay. three cheese ho- stuffed Howie. Bread. We did the deep dish. That cheese, one, in Howie hindsight, bread. I think that one looks better. That was that was the hit of of Fuck. the meal. Was the deep dish cheese Howie bread? Wow, people were going nuts. That was and it the, was good. That was the ones I, that it was that or the or the stuffed Howie bread that I was stuck between. The stuffed Howie bread was good, and I shouldn't have gotten it because Domino's again just does a better version with their with their cheesy bread. I it's, stuff my bread myself. <laughs> Jesus, oh, extra Howie. cheese. <laughs> Yum. Can you say nummy, <laughs> Howie? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Maybe you can stuff me. Howie. <laughs> Howie. Howie. Make that make sense, Howie. What are you talking about? Uh, I I think that me bread. Pizza. <laughs> okay. Stuff me with pizza. <laughs> okay. My, my, own, my own special blend of spices and sauces. <laughs> I always think, here's the thing, it came with a little bit of marinara dip and sauce, mm. and my issue is always, look, I know you can warm up the microwave, mm-hmm. if there was, if there's some way to package that so that it doesn't arrive cold, because I always yeah. feel like that dip and sauce is just a lot better if it's warm. Um, that said, I think this was cheesy and delicious and had a good texture to it, and I think this was, this was my favorite bite that we had of this Jeez. particular meal, and- I thought it was okay, I, I, like, obviously, if I had tried it when it was a little bit warmer, I think I would yeah. like it more- mm-hmm. I do think Domino's version is better, and I do wish I got the deep dish version. Yes, but you like that deep dish was good. Yeah, it was solid, really solid. You know, nice and nice and warm, and yeah, cheesy, cheesy fucking bread. Like, how can you go wrong? Um, some places do, but Hungry yeah. House did not. Uh, and I thought it was good, and yeah, amongst the group, especially people were uh, ravenous for it. Wow, shit. Well, we fucked up. I also, I'll say this now. I got a sandwich. The the Calzone inspired sub, uh, yes. Which I think for a lot of people, Casey, you're one of them. Yeah, I, I don't think you expected uh, Becky uh, Feldman, who was also our guest in the uh, earlier episode. Yes, uh, got uh, one of these sandwiches, and she said that she did not expect to have. Well, it says a, sub on the menu. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not a fucking sub. Not even it's a, little a calzone. Bit. It's a small calzone yeah. that is like kind of pre-sliced into four sections. Yeah, it, it's. I got the the steak and cheese and mushroom. I think it was called. And I think that's uh, according to their website or whatever I saw. That's one of the more popular options for that. I did the chicken bacon ranch. I let me tell you, which one I, did you get, Casey? I got the chicken bacon ranch okay. also. I don't know why it's one of the more popular ones because <laughs> look, I mean, like if it's a steak and cheese, I I'm gonna have more interest in it than the other op. I, I wanted to try a steak and cheese. I thought it would be nice. I thought mm-hmm. it could be fun. Here's what's on it. Steak, steak, cheese, and mushroom sub. Thinly sliced marinated steak, mushrooms, and mozzarella cheese with a side of Italian dressing, lettuce, and tomato upon request, which the sub sauce was there. I put some of the Italian dressing on there. Just kind of flavorless in a lot of ways. Yeah. I thought it was just, the one I had was just fine. 
it was um, didn't, didn't bother me. I didn't think it was bad, but it didn't like blow me away. And it was yeah. But just... were you at all and and, and 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 were you at all excited when you see subs on the menu? Because I was like, oh, that's cool. If this it's place different. is a good sandwich, yeah. yeah. And, and they, like, it's it, not at all the fact that they had their own special type of sandwich. I was right. like, oh, it's like one of their signature things. Like, I'll we'll we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, and it was just uh, yeah, a confusing shape. Yeah. For a sub, and then there's a lot of off-putting things about it. Yeah, a glorified pizzone. It's just a real, wow. real, just a real bummer. Glorified pizzone is you yeah. kind of nailed it. Also, just the idea of like little kids like wanting to go to like the mascot as a little kid <laughs> is just confusing. It doesn't make any sense. Pizza yeah. for us, by us. <laughs> <laughs> Howie, <laughs> I don't know oh, that. yeah, that seems like it was loaded. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I, the, the. Marinated steak, it just didn't taste like anything. To me, it tasted like I was eating a mushroom sub. Yeah. Which was kind of gnarly. Um, it just, because I knew there was steak in there. Yeah. But I was like, this tastes like a mushroom sub. It doesn't taste like anything else. And then I like took a piece of the steak to eat it by itself. And I was like, this tastes like a flavorless mushroom. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, wow. it was, it was, it was, uh, it was not great. So the sub didn't blow me away. And the, the, the cheesy bread was okay. But Wags, our they really lost me on your wings. I did not. Oh man, those wings are really disappointing. Oh boy. Yeah, and, and again, it's like a thing. They're like, we got the Howie wings, and and Howie wings has a registered trademark. So I was like, okay, this, this is one thing to get. Be, you got to yeah. get the Howie bread. You got to get the Howie wings. I think was the name in it. Really, they're just kind of tricking us by calling everything a Howie. And exactly. We're like, yeah. Oh well, this must be their signature. Right. <laughs> they just have. They just fix Howie to everything. I think that it's, ah, boy. The texture on the the bone in wings was okay. Um, I did not like the texture of the uh, or the the fry of the boneless wings. Uh, but the sauce of the boneless well, wings was well done. Well, yeah, the, well the sauce of the boneless wings was a lot better than like. Anyway, to me, it was just kind of like it was like an oven baked nugget. It wasn't any, sure. anything special to it. Uh, I went but, I went to it because the the Asian Howie wings which we had okay. yes were. Um... By the way, he should not be doing Asian Howie. That's not appropriate. <laughs> Yeah, Asian Howie will not be visiting us today. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> um, I got rid of him. Howie. <laughs> Howie. <laughs> what? We had it. We, it was during COVID. Okay. <laughs> Howie. What does that <laughs> mean? Minute, Howie. What does that mean? <laughs> Howie. What are you implying, Howie? That's not okay. It's great Jesus. that I'm falling into the Howie traps <laughs> myself. Um, Just as I planned. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh,. I thought that those wings were way too uh, uh, muscly and or muscly is the wrong word, uh, like fatty and 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 uh, they're a little gristly. Yeah, they. Gristly, they I, th- I thought they were. Okay. The I, I thought they were okay. Yeah. I think they were also like they were kind of all over the place because there were a bunch of different Ugh. like sizes and you know yeah. I had some good ones, I had some bad ones, but that was not the issue. The issue was their what they describe as the tangy Asian sauce was just a really chemically teriyaki. Yeah. It was re- it was way too sweet. It was cloyingly sweet, and then it just had like a super sciency aftertaste. Yeah. Um, I, I I found those pretty at first. I was like, oh, these aren't bad, and the buffalo wings are really gross. And then as I had them more, I was like, the buffalo wings might be better because these this aftertaste here is just so uh, off putting. I liked the buffalo nuggets more because I was like, these are bad, but they're like you know they're they're like this feels like what a lot of bad pizza places do, which is like yes. kind of shitty nuggets, nuggets with right. sauce on them, and they were. F- I mean, they were not good. No. They were maybe bad, but they were <laughs> fine also. I, I have to ask how your wings were dressed because based on what I got, it seemed like, and maybe because I ordered a lot and the guy was like, I got to get this out fast. It seemed like he like put all the wings in the box and then in two seconds, like almost like with a paintbrush, just like very quickly, like yes. splattered it with the sauce. It didn't seem like it was tossed. It didn't seem like it was there was any like rub or anything. It was just like or even just like a like a like a bottle like drizzle kind of thing. Yeah. Did you get the bone in or the boneless? We got uh, the bone in barbecue and we did boneless buffalo. And it was the same with both. Both. It just okay. felt like they took the they took this sauce and just very quickly drizzled it. Look, the boneless wings were not ready for the red carpet. They. They were not best dressed. No, wax. they weren't. No. So I, I think what they did is that the Asian Howie wings, uh, the bone in wings, they'd like rolled in in a in like a, a, a you know, in a in a fucking uh, metal bowl. That was good. 
They like rolled them in a bowl, you know, and like and okay. they, like those Not were well coated. Uh the the buffalo howie wings, the boneless ones, those were just sort of like nuggets that were put into the box, then yeah, just kind of Peter North some buffalo sauce on, on top of them. And it was not well distributed at all. I think it was Peter South. It was a light load. <laughs> it wasn't like it was like they were like they were not they were not Yeah. They weren't yeah. loaded up. Because like of that. the SAG after strike, they got a scab. They got Peter South to come in here. <laughs> you want to know who Peter South is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Your alter <laughs> ego. <laughs> Peter South is like, I got five and a half inches for you, baby. And you're like, what? <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, that's not bad, but I wouldn't <laughs> brag about it. <laughs> um, Peter South's got legs, wise. Yeah. We can talk about it later. He's got, um, three, he's got three legs. <laughs> <laughs> his, oh, his, his legs are also short. <laughs> 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 like Three that, five and a half inch legs. <laughs> that's that's what it is. It's proportionally he is like really impressive, but he's just like a very very small man. <laughs> he's like a yeah, Pillsbury Doughboy size, yeah. I guess. So five and a half is like holy shit. <laughs> then you pan out and he's on a countertop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot one and a half tablespoon. <laughs> it's very cool, specific. Peter South. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a lot to me, but <laughs> I gotta use that line sometimes. Um, <laughs> I uh, did you guys get desserts? Uh, we, we did. did. Yes. And, and this was also, you know what? Uh, can, can I just before we get to yeah, desserts? Can I just sure. say the dipping sauces were really disappointing. Yeah. We got a bunch of them, and a lot of them, Mitch. This is your point. They were just like the Ken's Steakhouse. They were just like a generic yeah. dipping sauces. Mm -hmm. There were a few Howie signature sauces, but. None of them were all that good. And the big thing, for a place that has fucking wings, they didn't have a ranch cup or a blue cheese yeah, cup. Yeah. They had a little, a little fucking uh, a, a, a little packet. And it's oh, just like, that's wow. not good for dipping. I got a ranch cup. You got a ranch cup. We didn't get well, no ranch fucked, cup. Yeah. I, I, there are ranch cups there. Wow. I, I pointed at it, called my shot, <laughs> and said, give me that ranch cup. Wow. Maybe you. we got the last ranch cup. Could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Labor Day Rush. <laughs> uh, but we were a little bummed by that. But uh, yes, we did get some desserts, and the desserts oh, we man. got were, were everyone in Glendale taking the kids out to ranch at How Hungry Howie's. <laughs> Come on, kids, we're getting ranch cups at Hungry Howie's. Um, I, They're crying. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we didn't end up getting the Howie's cookie, but we did get the pumpkin spice Howie bread, okay. uh, which I had it, and I think I just said this sucks. <laughs> I thought it was really bad. Yeah, the desserts were not great. We yeah. got the, we got the cookie and we got the, the cookie looked so much better. Cookie too. looked a lot better. No, it's not. It, it so one of my friends was eating it and was like, "This feels like it's missing sugar," <laughs> <laughs> which was like a real indictment. It was one of those things where like maybe if it had ice cream with it, it would be yeah. fine. It just felt like it was it was incomplete. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was. I mean, listen, I had a lot of it, but uh, it just yeah, same. And we we didn't get the pumpkin spice, but we got like the cinnamon sugar Howie bread. Uh, I think you got I, a little packet of icing too. To a, a little packet Peter of South icing, it. which yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of Peter South a little bit on the in a corner of the box, but it, it's like the 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 icing was so was also very chemically, mm -hmm. but it needed it because it was so dry without it that it, it actually was really dry, so yeah. dry. Like I wanted the dry. cookie or honestly the cinnamon and sugar ones, and so I saw your order and I was like, I'll do the cookie too. And then you're like, if you get the cookie, don't get the pumpkin spiced ones. Yes. And I was like, well, he mom. <laughs> Weiger wanted them, and I didn't want to take away no, from them. No, I just wanted. I, to, they, I didn't want to overload the order. It would have been fine with a cookie. I know, but I thought, like, I, I was like, I'm taking away your fun, and I was like, you know what? The pumpkin ones are. It's the. It's yes, is the season. Mm, yeah, let's do it. But it was again. That's why, why I mean, a mistake. That's it was the move. A, You're also again drawn to like, oh, it's but it's Howie bread. It's Howie. It's pumpkin it's spice special. Howie bread. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not special. No, no it's, it's just yeah. It's it's it was it was bad. Look. I wish that we had done sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> I bring the everything. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm not no follow up question, Sally. You wonder what that packet is on top of the cinnamon sticks? Yeah, I was, yeah, we actually I mean, do wonder. I kind of don't. The way this is going, I do not want to know what it is. I'm fine. How we made? <laughs> okay. How we zone? Uh. 
signature of cream. <laughs> I hope after this episode comes out, we don't find out like, yeah, Howie was named after like the owner's dead son. <laughs> like, <it's> so... <laughs> In we his see old honor, Billy he's like, come to hungry. He's the exact same thing as we're doing. <laughs> oh, it's my special restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> How'd he die? Oh, the owner killed him. <laughs> yeah. he, kill- he was too horny. He had to kill him. <laughs> just, yeah. Lethal doses of horny and just had to fucking. Um, I. Hungry Howie started off with a bang for me. And, yeah. And, and, uh, because I think we covered everything we did, right? Yeah, Joe, is there any food down. you didn't get to? Uh, no, that, that was, that was everything. The garlic yeah. cup was the best of the sauces for me. I didn't try the garlic yeah. cup. I mean, it was just a garlic butter, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because that was that hungry Howie brand though. That I was a different it, thing. I, I thought it was, but maybe oh, was it, it wasn't. Okay, maybe okay. it was just a generic. It I thought was it was a, generic. It was a cup mm. of garlic butter. Um, either way, I think I think at best an uneven experience at Hungry Howie's. I but wish that we just got a multiple pizzas. That's the big thing, and yeah. I think that's that. Honestly, like if this place, if we owe this place a revisit, I think it's just to have more of their regular pizzas because it seems like that was the highlight of your experience. Yeah, let's go to the park. It is truly like across the street. You you pick up the the pizzas from the overworked guy on Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> One guy who we got to give credit to this guy because he was alone in there, and and Amelia said that he was alone in there, and there were multiple people in front. Us, yeah, and he told her 15 minutes, yeah, and people were calling. It was like 15 minutes, and there was just one man, yeah, workhorse. working, working there. God own. bless and him. He, and I texted Amelia. I was like, my stomach was out of control, and I was like, there's no way she'll be there at the time. And she, everything turned out fine. She was ready to go. It all worked out. It yeah. all worked out. So, so God bless that guy, uh, Howie's dad. For for uh, <laughs> his for, name, he misses seat. his son. Um, and he's working hard so he doesn't have to think about his own mortality. And I get that. I will say when I went to Hungry Howie's, they were advertising a lot of stuff that was not on the ordering menu. Yeah, on or on the app either. It's like, I don't know. It's because I, I, I tried out their app a little bit and it's, yeah, I, I don't know why they wouldn't have their seasonal offerings there. Well, because I mean, there was just like a I didn't I wasn't interested in trying the pickle pizza, but uh-huh. I, but I was like, oh, that was not uh, I didn't even see that listed as an option. But mm. is that also like just like hey, there's just an old sign that was up? That could there, also like, be you know, it. that could know. also be it. And stuffed crust, I don't think I maybe that was on the menu, but it, they were really pushing it at the at the spot. Well, okay, so here's the other confusing thing that we found when we were ordering it, at, when we were, we were placing the order, is it, it seems to allow a lot of customization. Yes. And then as you go through it, it would say, like, it would just give you an error and say you couldn't do that. So, like, the the like we were originally going to get, like, a half bee sting, half something else, and then they're like, oh, no, it. you can only do, the specialty pizzas cannot be halves, and they have to be one size. They can only be large. Mm-hmm. So. Want a pickle on your pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, zip. <laughs> Howie. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. It's Ferguson. <laughs> um, it is a very Midwesty. It, it, it's a great, maybe it's a good Midwest uh, mascot. I don't know. If They're it's... comforted by him. Yeah. Yes, sure. <laughs> I, I mean, because that's the thing. And to your point earlier, Joe, it's like it's the, the, nothing about this guy says Italy. It all mm-hmm. just kind of no. sa- it says just like like you know like whatever uh, like a, a Protestant um, a, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yes American in the wasp sense. Um, wow, I I mean, look, I thought this was going to turn out good, and I I, I just I feel bad almost yeah. because I did I did enjoy that first bite, but. It really went downhill from there, Wise. You were 100% right. Yeah, well. I... well, well, we'll find out what our fork scores are. <laughs> it's so solemn. <laughs> Look. It's... Well, hey, when this we return. Is... Yeah. What people don't know is this is sad for us. <laughs> this is sad happens. for us. We it's don't really like sad. We don't like, you know, not giving a chain or full throated endorsement. We don't, don't want to disappoint how. I'll give you a full throat endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more Joe Boys. <laughs> Did you know over 80% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about? Seriously, think of how many free trials you've subscribed to that you've probably never canceled. That's why I'm such a big fan of Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Oh my god, I'm subscribed to the Doughboys Double on Patreon. Oh boy, Mitch. Then you're like most people who think they're spending $80 on their subscriptions, when in reality the number is closer to $200. Wow. 
When you're signed up for so many things, like streaming services you used to watch for one show or free trials for delivery apps you don't use, it's so easy to lose track of what you're paying for. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bill for you. By up to 20%, all you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money also lets you monitor all your expenses in one place, recommends custom budgets based on your past spending, and they'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limits. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 a year. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash doughboys. That's rocketmoney.com slash doughboys. Rocketmoney.com slash doughboys. Do it. Welcome back to Doughboys. Joe Quizal, our guest. It's time for our fork scores for Hungry Howie's Pizza. Joe, you've heard the show. You're familiar with our format. You know what to do. Mm -hmm. Your closing thoughts and your fork score for Hungry Howie's Pizza. Yeah, the one thing we didn't say is that this place is very affordable. This Great point. Very, uh, you know, if you're looking to get uh, a bunch of pizzas for not a lot of money, you know, there's I utilized the number of deals that were available to me. Um, and I have to say, we got, like I said, I brought a bunch of pizzas to my friends who were who were ready to... Dog pile on a on a piece of shit pizza chain. Yeah, and we were all pleasantly surprised. Like Mitch, you were saying, you take a first bite, and you're like, "Hold on a second, is hungry Howie's good?" Yes, and that's I mean, ordering anything other than the pizza feels like a roll of the dice anyway, yeah. right? Because it's a pizza chain, and the pizzas we had were good. And I would say comparable to Domino's and other chains that are like kind of in its category for what Hungry Howie's is attempting to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Right. You look at his weird little face. He's not trying to wow you with his authentic Italian cuisine. Sure. He's going to give you cheap pizza that you can get a bunch of when you're hanging out with your friends. Now, the the subs, the so-called subs, fine. The wings, kind of an afterthought. The desserts, not very good. Yeah. But I still, I would probably go back. And so that, that means something. So I'm going to give Hungry Howie's 3.75 forks. Wow. wow. Three yeah. forks, three times. Very good score. I'm also looking at his hair now and is like his hair like a circle? You know what I'm, say, know what I'm saying? Like is, is the front of his hair there like a circle, like a hat shape? Oh, I see what you're saying. Is it yes. a wave or is it a circle that clo that folds into the logo? Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, I think he might just have like a helmet of hair. It's one of those oh. sorts of things. Jeez. I did. It's almost like an optical illusion. It I didn't is. see what you're saying. Like, yes. yeah, I think it juts out. I think it's. I think that is a flap. But then there's also I don't know. No, I think it's a flap. I also think it's a flap, but it's it a looks hair like it could helmet. Be either. Look, because it could be like a mushroom, right? It yeah, could be it's like, true. I think the football season is has begun as of now. Annoying. Would love to watch the first game. Uh -huh. Recording <laughs> Doughboys instead. <laughs> Sucks. What is the first game? Uh, who is it? Is it Kansas City? I don't follow football. I don't know. I have no idea. I should know this. Well, like, we're three. See. It's three Who's weeks it? in the past at this point. Two or three weeks in the past. So it's fine. We don't need to. Dwell Here we on go. It. The on um, the ESPN app, it will be the Lions first and the Chiefs. Lions and the Chiefs. Okay, so it, okay, it is Lions and the Chiefs. Zero zero right now. The for, uh, Great. five minutes Neil left in the first. In There's the first. your live update on a football game from three <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> some people maybe don't know yet. Maybe it's a spoiler for some people. People Who binge knows? the NFL. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait yeah. for the. I'm wait gonna for wait for the whole season to be I'm out. Gonna, I, yeah, I'm waiting for like yeah till October to <laughs> is start. The, is the Super Bowl good? If it is, I'll watch all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that. You get it. Yeah, I get um, it. If I was having a bunch of the boys over, boys. Well, Boys, not like boys, boys, but like the boys, not the like boys. Hungry the Howie's boys. boys. No, no, not Hungry Howie's boys. <laughs> I'll come over. <laughs> oh, no, no. Bring no, my Howie, friends. No. No. no, you're not really one of the boys, no. Howie. <laughs> no, you're talking Micah's, Chankton, Frailbot, Ramondi. Yeah. Uh, LD, you know, is hanging out. Wu-Tang's going to be mm. there. Uh, Shieldsy. You need pubes Chewy. to get into this party. <laughs> <laughs> right, Howie? <laughs> 
Scoop's going to be there. Scoop's going to be there. Commissioner of the Fantasy League, Scoop. Whoa. Does a bad job. Uh, no, he does a great job. Um, <laughs> am I going to order up a bunch of Hungry Howies for me and the boys yeah. watching the games? No, I'm not going to do it. But if I'm if I'm at Sketch Cram, <laughs> there you go. And I need a bunch of pizzas yeah. for the for the writers. See, I I think that and you secretly hate them. <laughs> <laughs> a part of me is like the Bee Sting pizza maybe would go all right over if the boys were hanging out, but like all the sides that we had were not good in my in this first experience. I wouldn't get a sub. The buffalo chicken, I don't know. I, I I would probably go boneless, and I still don't feel that great about it. Stuffed Howie bread, I maybe feel okay about doing. And then the pizzas, but we didn't try enough of the pizzas. We got the thin crust, which was not good in our experience. And the bee sting was kind of the only thing that that uh to me that that kind of shone through and was 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 what I would say good was it, it's it's around four forks worthy. The the that especially if I got a hot. Um, so I wouldn't get it for the boys and I wouldn't get it for myself, but I do think that there's maybe a place, especially if I tried the pizza more, if they're, you were getting a lot of pizzas and they're cheap and it could be a fun thing to do. But as of right now, and I'm sorry, Howie, I am afraid to anger you in many ways. Don't say it. (laughs) Watch your words. (laughs) I think I got to go two and a half forks. Wow. Uh, yeah, here's the thing. Hungry Howie's Pizza. Pizza is in the name. Pizza is what this place does. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what they're, they're leading. Two and a half forks is actually almost too nice of a way. Two, two and a quarter forks. Sorry. Whoa. Two and a quarter forks. Two forks, one time. The, 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 they put in their logo flavored crust pizza. They talk mm-hmm. about a home of the flavored crust pizza. Pizza, they're leading with the pizza, at least in their branding. However, their menu is directing you towards a bunch of other shit. And none of it hit except for the pizza. I, I like the, the 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 stuffed Howie bread a little bit. I actually, oh yeah, I like the actually a little more than a little bit. It was like basically my 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 favorite second th- favorite thing from this particular outing. But everything else, like the like, I like getting wings when I get pizza. To me, it's sure. like getting fries with a burger. Mm-hmm. And I thought these wings were just so disappointing. Um, the subs I didn't have, but you know, everyone seemed like they were bound by them. The desserts are an afterthought. Whatever, that's the case with every single chain pizza place. But it's just, it's really just the pizza is the one thing that's worthwhile here, which I do think at least the non thin crust, the original crust pizza was pretty decent. I thought that was good. Uh, But I don't know. It just leaves a lot to be desired. I will revisit this place because I'm interested to he- to have some of its other like specialty pizzas and try all of its more of their different flavored crusts. And, mm-hmm. and I'd just like to, to try to focus in on that aspect of the menu. But because of this experience, I think I'm in the hand-holding club with the Spoon Man. I think I'm going to go, or at least Ballpark Buds with you, two and a half forks is going to be my score. And to shout out our previous Doughboys double guest, uh, Becky Feldman, who uh, we had some Hungry Howies with us, uh, her thoughts, I give it three forks because it actually didn't make me feel too stuffed gro- slash gross afterwards. Mm. So three forks from Feldman. Was this? Didn't she say while we were recording that she was feeling lethargic? She was, yeah. And then afterwards, I think she's feeling a little better. Okay, so. okay, okay. It lifted her up? Yeah. It may have been just doing Doughboys. may have made her feel lethargic. That's probably what it was. <laughs> Should we uh, give those scores? <laughs> uh, I'll be seeing the both of you tonight. <laughs> the fuck? Oh, all right. <laughs> My eyes are closed. I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you guys see the? they were also pushing a tie-dye pizza? Yes, and we should have gotten it. It is it like it has that like weird, probably flavorless glitter on it. Yeah, I just I that would have. I think so that much gimmickry sucked. here. Yeah. yeah, it was on the. I was on Howie's secret menu. <laughs> Shh. I, I tell. I honestly <laughs> think that I would probably be have a little bit more fandom towards this place or a little bit more favoritism towards this place if not for Howie himself, who I find just so unnerving. This might be one of the spots that we need to just try a bunch of different pizzas from there. Yeah, we might just need to get it again. But I think for a first, I, 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 I Joe, I appreciate you pitching it, and I'm glad that we tried mm-hmm. it because I think this is a place that should be on our radar, especially again the 11th, 11th. biggest pizza chain in America. It's Over wild. 500 locations. Yeah, which re- the, both those effects surprised me. Yeah, it's huge. 
Yeah. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, was, that was our review of Hungry Howie's Pizza. It's time Take for the picture segment. down. Take the picture down. Yeah, please, yeah, we got to get Howie get, off of there. Get him out of there. <laughs> Thank That's you, better. Thank uh, you, Casey. God. <laughs> I can actually still see it on Casey's monitor. <laughs> <laughs> right over there. Oh, boy. Yeah, Casey's keeping that up for personal reasons. <laughs> this background now. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Uh, it's time for a segment. I've got a mystery beverage, and Mitch and Joe must use their senses to reveal its identity. Wow. It's the Weiger Challenge. So here we go. It's been a little while since the Weiger Challenge. Oh, look at this. Wow. Ori Porter, I thought that there were two glasses Thank of you. wine next to you, which I wasn't surprised yeah. by. <laughs> you, you, you and Howie. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I've got some uh, I've got some beverages for you. I have, a, I have, a, I have you. a guess off of the sniff. Yeah, Mitch is guessing too. from the sniff. If you want to describe what you have in front of you, uh, in these little like uh, kind of tumbler glasses. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a it's a dark, dark liquid, brownish liquid. Yeah, maybe soda. I can't tell. Uh, I, can we immediately start to say what it smells like? Feel free to. It's a strong cherry cherry yes. scent is mm-hmm. what I'm getting. Can we can we sip? Yeah, of course. Uh, while you're sipping, while you're you're you're, you're tasting this, uh, Joe, I want to ask about your album, Funny mm-hmm. Songs and Sketches. It's yeah. out tomorrow. Uh, what, what what should people expect, and where can people find it? So it is, uh, in in a sense, like a throwback album to like you know when Sandler used to put out sketch oh, albums yeah, and stuff like that. I just felt like there hadn't been a sketch album in a while, uh, or at least one that not one that I had noticed. And so, yeah, I mean, there's there's sketches on it with a lot of a lot of funny people, and there's a handful of of songs as well. I tried to be very clear in the title of the album, "Funny Songs and Sketches," <laughs> and uh, you can you can get that pretty much anywhere you listen to music. And if you want to, I mean, I'll I'll be posting obnoxiously about it on my socials uh, at Joe Qua on Instagram and TikTok, Joe K Joe K on uh, Twitter. Well, that congrats rules. on the album. Yeah, Thank congrats. you. Thank Thank you. Check yes. it out. I have a guess on this. Yes, go for it. Well, should I let our guests guess? No, first? no, no. You, you, no, you, go, go, you go first, please. Um, cherry Dr. Pepper. Are you going to lock that in? Mm-hmm. Cherry Dr. Pepper. Go. That would have been my guess. Um, so I guess I'll say I'll, I'll go... Maybe it's black cherry Dr. Pepper, but still, same difference. Mm. Yeah, I'll say um, just just to change it up. I think it's I do think it's like a cherry, like a diet cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper is what I'll say. Even though I didn't get any mm. hints of vanilla, That's good. that could that but like that different that differ, differentiating it like that could get you the win, right? I'm looking at the wiki right now, and Mitch is, you've had a pretty dominant run in the Weiger Challenge. Mm. Uh, I would say that you, you know, you you have a, a, at least from the from the early going, you seem to have a, a much better than 500 record. Maybe it's evened out over time. Sure. But you've won the last three, the most okay. recent ones. Um, and, uh, or maybe, you know what, honestly, the past six Weiger Challenges, God damn. you have either won or tied. What it falls to to me right now is to decide who won this one, because it's a little bit difficult to adjudicate. It's like somewhere in between what we said. It's not a Dr. Pepper. Oh, okay. oh, wow. It is, in fact, straight from Burning Man, where Amelia brought this back from with her. Uh, what? Hib Extra. Holy oh, wow. shit. Yes, which is a artificially flavored spicy cherry soda. It is, though, it is the Pib Heavy, which makes me feel like I have to give it to Mitch he because he did diet. not guess a diet drink. Yeah. So, Mitch, I'm going to say you won the Weiger Challenge. You can have this Pib Extra if you like. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pib time. Do you want the Pib Extra? I do not. Oh, well. <laughs> I was going to be a good host and give it to you, but. I've got plenty here. I I'm... actually like this. I think it's good. Yeah, Pib Extra is good. I think it's good. Yeah, it is pretty good. I don't Refreshing. know why they dropped the Mr. Pib branding and changed to Pib Extra. I liked Mr. Pib, but you know, whatever. You, you know what's so funny about that is because I was like, this is like has a bite to it that tastes like a Dr. Pepper. But I was like, but is the Dr. Pepper bite stronger than this? That's like what I was mm-hmm. trying to figure mm-hmm. out in my head. And I was like, maybe the cherry Dr. Pepper just is a little less of a, a Dr. Peppery bite. Yeah. But um, this is a nice soda. I like it. It's, yeah. It's it's got it's it's got a nice nice taste to it. I was also. Were you in the? Did you? Oh, did you think Dr. Pepper right away or no? I did. Yeah. Well, the, uh, obviously, like we, could, you could smell the cherry smell immediately, the cherry, yeah. and then yeah, it just because I was like, well, maybe it's wild cherry Pepsi, but it's like it's definitely not Pepsi. Um, 
Yeah, I thought it was maybe like a cherry cola or something. But but it it, it felt too strong of pepper, of pib or pepper. Amelia, so Amelia was mm. at Burning Man. This will be a little bit dated as of this uh, release, but she was at Burning Man and she she brought two cans of pib extra back with her for some reason. Did she have to drag it through the mud and like? I guess so. Because the idea of bringing anything back from Burning Man this year's Burning Man is yes. funny. When there's cars abandoned, there. yeah, right. she, she was she <laughs> was I have to bring pib extra for the doughboys. <laughs> We were like, also, you like- better bring us back those pib extras. <laughs> also, you promised us. Are these not? You, can you not get these in the store? You can get them anywhere. <laughs> That's right. It's not, it's not a Burning the- Man exclusive, unless there's a little something special in here. <laughs> well, it was funny too because Amelia was like, we were talking. We were like, oh my god, thank god you're okay. She's like, media. That was like the media sensation with that. It was. We were having fun. <laughs> she was like, she just was having a good time at Burning Man. It sounds like yeah. we didn't, didn't want to leave. Yeah. We actually will have talked about this on a past episode of Doughboys Double, so you can check that out. It did. It did. Patreon.com slash Doughboys. It did seem to border into like the media is like fake newsing it. Like, <laughs> no one's actually getting sick. The yeah. liberal okay. media. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. We do like we, there was like there's like Teslas stuck in the mud. Yeah. There was, she was te- like mm-hmm. there's like Teslas that like the mud is was so crazy and people were sinking in it and now it's like hardened and like you can't like what happened with the dinosaurs, I assume. Mm. Yeah, like it's are, are the new tar pits. Yes, these these might be the new tar pits. Will people in the future dig up these cars and like they did the dinosaurs? Possibly. Oh, these were the ancient species of old. They roamed. They one point Teslas <laughs> ro- ruled the earth. They, That's what they're gonna think. They ate. The, one, there was a one boy who fed them all their meals, and his name was Howie. <laughs> <laughs> he was their god. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that was a Weiger challenge, just like a restaurant we value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback. And hey, we have a voicemail today. Casey, if you want to play that. Sarah, the show's called Twisted Metal. It's on Peacock. Yep, the show's Twisted Metal. Sorry, guys. Uh, that was me talking to my wife or trying to decide what to watch after I leave this question. Sarah, it's streaming on Peacock now. It's uh, called <laughs> Twisted Metal. Sorry, guys. Um, what would your motto be for your restaurant? You know, Olive Garden has, when you're here, your family. McDonald's has, we love to see you smile. If you had a restaurant, what would your tagline or Mm. motto be? Thanks. Bye. Wow. That was nice. That was very nice. It'd be funny. I was like, that's nice. And then I'm barred from acting ever again. (laughs) No no loopholes. It was very kind. Um, hmm. So we're looking for, what is your restaurant... If you have a restaurant, what would your motto be? What would your tagline be to get people in the door? I'm thinking outside the box. Yeah. I'm not thinking the experience of eating. And the tagline is going to be, you're going to like the way you dump. <laughs> that's no, no one is taking that angle. Great. No one talks about that's it. No one's great. taking that angle. But that's I actually key love to it. a meal. Like, yeah, sure. Of course, like everyone's going to say you're going to enjoy it coming in. But how's it coming out? Yeah. And you're going to like it. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's great. That's hard to beat. These are hard. These are always a, these are always the hard exercises. What like it, it's like come up with a come up with something that a group of like a, a marketing team will spend months crafting yeah. on the spot and, and yeah. get a million dollars for yeah. coming up with. <laughs> yeah, come up with it now. <laughs> you fucking pieces of shit. Mine is. Come to Hungry Howie's. I'll fill you up. <laughs> Here's mine. Ready? Yeah. It's something I said to you recently. With tastes this good, you got to be fibbing me. That is good. <laughs> no, it's not. No, I like it. With tastes this good, you got to be fibbing me. I like it. That's a winner. Everyone across the country will be saying it. You'll become the you gotta be fibbing me guy. You gotta be, yeah, yeah. You say be, it, say it. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be fibbing me. Yay! <laughs> I, you gotta be fibbing me. I mean, I was thinking of other things of like, come on in, <laughs> come on out, <laughs> <laughs> and do it all again. <laughs> How's that? You can come to my restaurant, but you can also leave when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> but you could also come back. We would love that if you did. That was Dutton had a great birthday boy show sketch, and I was in it. Where it was, I think it was called Marty's, 
And it's like you pay for what you – like uh, you get what you pay for, which is like a thing about how like you have to pay for your food. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, I don't know if you remember that sketch. A Dutton original. Uh, good well, old Dutts. Good old Dutts. That's the that's the album dropped too. That's can, right. Can, that's right. That. Uh, I think there's probably a play on a classic film you could do, mm. uh, and it would uh, maybe like a you know guess who's coming for Weiger? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take the opposite approach of yeah. of Joe here. I'm gonna say uh, eat till you're sick. Mm. How's that? It's so good. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't happens matter. Later. Yeah, eat till you eat till you're sick. You you filthy pig. <laughs> <laughs> That's good too. Yeah, right. Give him some shit at the end. How about just like sometimes I feel like kind of a kind of a borderline like nonsense baby talk one hits like chomp chomp. That's mm. good. Chomp chomp. Yeah, it's Weiger's place. Chomp chomp. That's I like that. Not too far from Red Robin. Yum. That's true. That That's a good true. one. I like the baby speak. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. Or maybe like no kids, like no kids allowed would be yeah. fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's any. Has there ever? Has there ever? Honestly, I'm trying to think of like like catchphrases that actually worked on me. Yeah. And there are like a few. Like you know, in college, I sang the the. Remember Hootie saying like the Burger King. Bacon Cheddar yeah. Ranch. Oh, yeah, yeah, We yeah. like that. Tender Crisp Bacon Cheddar Ranch. Yeah, that was. was like a big hit. But then also, like, commercials Huge got too hit. weird. <laughs> and uh, we talked about the Quizno Rats, which are yes. back. The yes. Quizno Rats oh, are shit. back. Oh, fuck. They're back. That's a real desperation move. But they said, like, we they're doing a Domino's in a way. They're like, we know that the we've, like, fallen apart here. Oh, boy, that's, like, 10 years too late, man. That's a real... <sighs> That's that, again. I think that's. Just I kind of want to give him a way. chance a, a little Mary. bit. I want little guys. Yeah, <laughs> I like the little guys. Um, I think the one that maybe ba da ba 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 really worked on that's me. That's good, mm -hmm. and that's that, and that is nonsense. Yeah, I guess the slogan was "I'm loving it." I'm loving it. More so than the ba da ba ba ba. I guess is the lead up to. Yeah, I wouldn't call that the motto. The preface. I'm loving it. Is is but. You think better ingredients, better pizza works on people? No. On, on nobody, I uh, not even a, not even a dumbass, Mitch. It's not bad. I think maybe it does work on some dumbasses, which I'm not one of. <laughs> I no, would, it's I, better. I, the pizza is ingredient better because the ingredients are better. <laughs> Someone must have thought that. Yeah. So have you heard the Doughboys podcast? <laughs> well, they're, 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 they're like yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's any tagline that really has worked for me. How about let's make a meal? That's good. Wait, is that just a let's make a deal? Yeah. It's a fun play. It's a fun um, play on that. Yeah, let's okay. make a deal. meal. Um, you know, honestly, if like we talk, we've talked about Panera, if 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 it was like, because like you're going to like the way it comes out or whatever, like the dump one. Yeah. Or you're going to like your dump, right? Yeah. You're going to like the way you dump. You're going to like the way you dump is yes. good. But for Panera, if it was like, Come break sad news here. You know what I mean? Like, I <laughs> yes. think if some of them just went honest, yeah. I think I would like it. Share your heartbreak here. Pan yeah. Panera, it's time to end things. <laughs> <laughs> this is always a hard question. It's tricky. I like the way the question started off with what he was saying at first, mm. which was just promotion of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he was, he was just talking to his, his partner. <laughs> random talk to his partner, Sarah. Yeah. I mean, that's all that was. <laughs> Do you think Have It Your Way, at, at the time, they were like, wait a second, I could what? You know what? Have It Your Way is another one that maybe did stick with me. I, I it did, also, I, yeah. It did, I was like, oh, I can get anything I want. It stood the test of time a little yeah. bit, too, because that one's been, I think, around since the 80s. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that was their whole thing. It was just like, hey, we can do that. Because not all, it, they're, it, it, and now in the era of apps and like, you know, kiosk ordering where you can make endless customizations. I think people have forgotten that like there was an era of fast food where you weren't making substitutions, where that just was, mm -hmm. was like you got it as it came, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But so the Burger King came through and they said, were like, hey, do you want to you want to change things up? Go feel free. Whatever you want to do. You don't know what sadly want that would work on me, I think, if it was like a threat. It was like <laughs> if you don't if you don't eat here, you'll get sick or something. I yeah. think I would go. <laughs> I think I think that would like scare yeah. me enough to be like, well, I should get this. I feel if, yeah. if if you drove by a Taco Bell and it was like, if you don't stop in, you're gonna yeah. something bad will happen. It's dangerous not to eat. Here. Yeah, come to Taco Bell, or we'll kill your family. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I think it. that would work on me. I'm a superstitious enough person that that yeah. would maybe work. Yeah. 
what about think outside the bun? Think some idiot was ever like, holy shit. Wait. That's the, that, I agree. But that's, I, I should. <laughs> yeah. That one never worked for me, but I do like it because it is Taco Bell. But uh, yeah, I do like think outside the bun, but I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I, there are definitely some true dipshit, like, was just like, whoa. Hold that's on. Cool. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I can't even think of any more. Eating good in the neighborhood. Eating good in the neighborhood. Is that one I didn't really care too much about, but I, is that DQ? No, that's, no, that's Applebee's. Uh, Applebee's. Applebee's. Oh, yeah. shit. Jeez. Um. Yeah. What are what are does Wendy's have one? Um. Fuck. I'm trying to think of a famous famous Wendy's tagline. I mean, we uh, like where's the beef? I think is their big where's one. the beef? Where's yeah. the beef? But that's not the tagline. It was just a campaign. Yeah. McDonald's I, has had a lot. They've had like, did somebody say McDonald's? That was one in the nineties. Oh yeah. Yeah. We love to see you smile. Yeah. Uh, I'm loving it. How about uh, I? I remember Food Folks and Fun. That was a little bit more of an obscure one, but there was a time when McDonald's had that Food Folks oh. and Fun. Hmm. How about you know where's the beef? The beef. How about here's the beef, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch is implied. Yeah, but it's right. There. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't say that on TV. <laughs> but here's the beef, you old bitch. <laughs> What is this place? <laughs> Freddy Krueger's. <laughs> Krueger's. Yeah. If you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GO-DOUGH. That's 830-463-6844. And get the Doughboys Double Our Weekly Bonus Episode by joining the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. Joe Quazala, the album is Funny Songs and Sketches. That's out tomorrow. The the uh, launch show, the the mm -hmm. uh, release party is tonight yes. at Dynasty Typewriter mm -hmm. if you're in L.A. Uh, again, tell us about uh, any, any uh, plug it again and then tell us anything else we should know yeah. uh, about uh, anything you got going on. Thank you. Yeah. So the, the show tonight, we're going to be playing live music from the, oh, that from that the rocks. album and yeah, have some special guests. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. And then the album's out tomorrow. Please, uh, please check that out. Uh, it is, yeah, it's a, it's a throwback, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. We'll be debuting the first music video tomorrow as well. So, you know, in the best way to, to find this stuff. And if you want to watch, I put out a lot of sketches and stuff. And uh, at Joe Qua, J O E K W A on Instagram and TikTok, Joe K, Joe K on Twitter. And uh, yeah, that's that's mostly it. Follow me, and you can see all all the bullshit I put out in the world. Yeah, a, little, a lot of really funny sketches. I've always enjoyed oh, your thank output. You. So thank uh, you. yeah, great to have yeah, you on the show. Yeah. And congratulations! Congrats. That's Appreciate awesome. it, guys. Yeah. This was a lot of fun. What a what a what a hoot! What a treat! Here's a tagline for Doughboys: If your significant other is listening, it's time to rethink things. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Wagner. Happy eating. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> I'm with you always. <laughs> want to dress like the Doughboys? Of course you don't. But you will want to wear our all-new Doughboys merch. Check out our completely revamped merch line in partnership with Kinship Goods. We've got high-quality shirts, hats, aprons, totes, and much more to come. Wow! Only at doughboys.kinshipgoods.com. That's K-I-N-S-H-I-P goods.com. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>